Sandlot was interesting because it didn't really pick up its pop culture thing for like 20 years. Your scene was the reason why I found out what the word milk means. <laughs> I'm 100% pro suicide. It's your choice. I'm pro choice. Boom. Fire. Okay, I have to start this episode off with a slight apology to you. Why? We discussed this on your podcast yesterday. You know, I'm an immigrant from Russia. Don't really know too much. I kept saying that you're from Goonies. Yeah, I know. I just let you go. I know. You I told him the same thing. I told him the same thing. And I was like, thing. dude, that is the Sandlot kid. I knew all the <laughs> but I was like, wow, I'm such a moron. So ah, sorry about that. I thought it was funny, actually. So I just kind of let it roll. <laughs> I said the same thing. I'm like, yo, I'm like. Are they both kind of equal? Like, like if no. I said you were like, dude, where's my car? You'd be like, huh. Yeah, no, no, dude's no. where my car is a great film. It too. is great. Um, yeah, but, but it's not like, equal. Yeah. They're not equal because Goonies is kind of. Goonies is like the generation before that. Right. So I'm saying it's a little bit of a compliment. But yeah, no, no, no. What an insult. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no insult. I mean, it's a great film. Um, it does have the same pop culture aura and it actually holds up and stands the test of time. So in, in you know, in raw data, they are, you know, one and the same. Yeah, they're similar. Yeah. I guess from what's the worst thing someone's like uh, up when talking to you about? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have the presence of like talk down to me type of thing. So like it's usually pretty pretty up and up you know what i mean if yeah. anything people just like somebody is trying to hype it up and people just don't don't really like they don't give a but i don't i don't give a so it's even better of a situation so in that in that regard, which is good you know? because you don't attach your ego to any situation it's like you don't walk away with anything negative it's just so cool yeah. to be a part of like history right i moved to america when i was 10 years old that was one of the movies i didn't know english when that i kept Sandler watching came out 24 7 right yeah. and that was your scene was the reason why I found out what the word MILF means. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like at that, when you're young, you're like trying to hook up with older chicks and bro, when you have no reference and you have no Instagram, no nothing, and you see a movie, you're like, oh my God, this is, this is what I want to be like. Did you do like red carpet at that time? Like when that came out, was that like monumental for you? I'm just curious because I'm like so giddy about it was interesting because it was a big studio film at the time. Um, the budget was like five or six million dollars. So for 92, I mean, it wasn't a huge studio film, but it was a studio film, you know, and we did a bunch of press and uh, I had been working already. But obviously this was a very big uh, film and they did a lot of press around it, a lot of signings and different shit as we start to get on like promotional tours. Right. And then obviously we did a. We did a red carpet here in Brentwood down by uh, UCLA at the theater there where they used to do red carpets and shit. And uh, yeah, it was cool, man. I remember um, that experience was was pretty big deal. It was a lot of press. It was like the studio machine was still the Pump, studio yeah. machine. Like, you know like what I mean? Would you think that if that movie came out with streaming, it wouldn't have the cultural impact that it did when it came out when movies mattered, right? Like movies were an event. Now it's like you just scroll and you're like, new release. You watch and you move on. You talk yeah. about it with two people the next day and then it's out. It's like it, movies are now like Instagram posts to me. They are. Like I watch it and move on. That's watch really it and move on. Analogy. Watch it and yeah. move on. Sandlot was interesting because it didn't really pick up its pop culture thing for like 20 years. You so, think so? Yeah, it was big. It did 35 million at the box office, which wasn't crazy, but was decent. And then on video, on VHS, it did really, really well. And then continue to do really, really well for 10 years. And like, I'm talking like kids wearing out VHA steps. And then when DVDs came, it's still fucking sold. Right. So yeah. it did 35 million at the box office. It's done over a billion dollars. Oh my bro, God. That's in nuts. 31 years. But the longevity of that movie is just crazy. Yeah. Bro. Nobody thinks that that's going to be that thing. You know what I mean? So you can't, you can't guess it. You, you know? can't pre-plan something like that. No, yeah. no, no. They either work or they don't. And for some reason, each generation still will watch the film, pick it up, love it. It's timeless. And and just watch it over and over again. How do you not show that to your kids though? You know what yeah. I have you? Did you? Yeah, you I like, showed them to that? my kids. Yeah, they, yeah, they dig it. They're not like super into it, but uh, like each generation has their time when they get into it and then they watch it a lot. You know what I mean? It takes a while for them to get like to the point where they understand. They start at like five, but it's really like a eight to like 14 year old love affair type of movie you know what i mean it's when you get old enough to understand all of the concepts of like the the situations and all the situations right. and stuff in it you know it's also kind of weird now that we're speaking about this that it's hard to relate to it in this generation you know why because that movie 
makes you feel like I want to go to the park and show my boys. I want to go to the park and play baseball. I want to go to the park. And nowadays, nobody's doing that because they're on their phone. Yeah. So it's like, how, do, how am I relating to this feeling? You know what I mean? Like yeah. to get in trouble with your boys, go, the dog is barking. Everything right. is crazy. This generation that looks like we're, we're like in the 1800s. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's, that's why, but that's kind of, it's so sad to me, dude. Like I hate that. Cause I'm just like, yo, that feeling was some of the best times. In the same regard, I think that parents tend to show that film to their kids cause they want them to go out and get in trouble and do dumb shit and like learn, you know what I mean? It's just like a, golden era of being a child. It was like that <laughs> perfect innocence before the internet and post, you know, mm -hmm. 80s, fuck whatever bullshit in America. Like it was just the 90s to me. And I know every generation goes like, we had the best time growing up. Like the 90s was the best time to grow up because you just were on the cusp of like the tech bubble. Bro, Y2K, remember? We all thought like, you yeah. know, everyone's going to die because like hospitals are going to lose power. Bank accounts are going to close because no one figured out how to fucking do dates. Probably properly. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> it just didn't yeah. plan for it. It was like the craziest <laughs> time growing up in the I was 90s. Still in Ukraine, but you went from like a house phone to a cell phone in your hands, right? Like it's pretty absurd. That jump in tech. <sighs> Sandlot was interesting also because it's set in the sixties. So had it been set in the nineties, I think it would have got lost with all of the other cheesy Disney. Because it Fox. didn't have that charm. Yeah, the, the thing about it was, is uh, the director, um, David Mickey Evans, he told Tony Richmond, the, the DP, he showed him like old Kodak chromatic film, which was like a style of film from the 60s that was like mid-century modern on film, basically like super Palm Springs vibes. It has this look. And he said, I want the film to look like this. And because of it, it's kind of like this time capsule to like Americana, to like real America, like to what we romanticize of the cars and the looks and the innocence and like the, you know, the raw American values. The reason right. that, you know, people such as your families um, decided to come here to want to build because yeah. America offered a better life. That, that, that time capsule, like you said, is basically when girls or people are like, I was born in the wrong era. You're like, that's what they're talking about. Yeah, they want to be there. Right, like, After yeah, the you war, guys could barely the fucking vote. baby boom, everything's popping. America's at its height. You know what I mean? It's like kind of sex that. drugs or, you know, like we have a sexual revolution, that, right? Yeah, the, the sex 60s, revolution 70s. in the 60s, 70s coming. And then well, obviously the 80s got weird, but also don't forget, you know how Instagram and all these platforms have all these filters and color grading that the, the movie, the way it's color graded. Yeah. That vibe is set the present for like all the other like filters and all these, all these like pictures and everything. They yeah. all want to replicate that look. You know what I mean? And that's why you can still play it and it holds up because it still looks like something, you know, 30 years old, but still modern too. It has a weird... It's an anomaly, bro. No, no one's Sometimes. tried to. Uh, uh, pardon me if I'm like an idiot again. They was it ever? A, was it ever? Uh, they made sequels on video. That's what I was gonna yeah. ask. Yeah, they did a two and a three. The, the part two was with a group of girls setting off rockets, so it had nothing to do with the film. Man, the they part were three woker was, than we are now. Uh, <laughs> Making an all girl crew. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, Ghostbusters no. just did like that five years ago, but yeah, part three was like a, a throwback too, but. Uh, I was actually in that one. They had me come back and play myself older. But it was another like Fox home video, low budget thing. Which right, was, but those crush sometimes too. Like when Disney yeah. did like Aladdin 2 straight to VHS. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had it, had it. Its, it had its time. But nothing will stand up to like the original, uh, the original film. And who knows? I mean, Disney owns it now, so it could go one of two ways. Either they pump it back. Did yeah. you guys, or did you, was there a 30 year anniversary or anything? Yeah, we that did was last year, right? Year, uh, two years ago, one year Last year, yeah. last year was yep. the 30th anniversary. So we did a lot of touring and baseball stadiums and major league and shit like that. It was cool. When you guys go on a press run 30 years later, right? Yeah. Like essentially trying to hype this movie up a little bit, tap into nostalgia with everyone. Do you see a spike in royalties for that year? Because more people started watching, right? As opposed to just like the normal trajectory for whatever, 20 years after it released. It doesn't increase residuals necessarily i don't think because who knows how the streaming shit is actually done these days you know it's a it's a weird thing where we don't really know what is being calculated it's a little shady you know? um i mean your guess is good as mine bro right. like the 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 algorithm you would have to have to calculate that is and then to audit their numbers would be like fucking impossible on top of the fact that isn't hollywood notorious for doing accounting so every movie loses money of course 
I mean, so one like thing we did said, try to do. It did 30 million, right? They probably went, oh, marketing was 30 million, right? And they write it off as a loss. I don't know, but but yeah, they have ways of. of, of Hollywood accounting, I heard. And yeah. that's how they get people to not get royalties, right? Would like, you, say you, have, would say you, say you have, start to get Hollywood? Right, right. Like, say you have like a percentage on the film somehow, right? Like they give you 5% of the film because they want yeah, you so matters, bad. It's like gross net. Right. Whatever. And then they just go, boom, 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 boom. Hollywood accounting, guys, we actually didn't make any money because we spent a billion dollars marketing it. And that dude's just like, Bro, I was supposed to get 5%. We did have a little thing where MGM owned the merchandising rights, and we found a contract uh, for the film where we did have a piece of merchandising, and, but auditing them was like, good luck. Right. They came back with some numbers that were like basically trash while we look around at all these motherfuckers with T-shirts and all these licensing deals to Walmart and Target and shit. And then uh, the attorney who was a really good uh, entertainment attorney was like, he was like, look, we can spend 200 grand auditing their books and really going through all their shit and there might be some money there or there might not he said it's up to you but if i was you i would just take what they're offering because that's kind of what it is you know right it's hard to fight do you have the rights to that name squints yeah i have the rights to my no, version of it oh, cool yeah yeah of course yeah to the film i mean i don't know that squints is a Trademark. The name itself would right. be like it's a very vague thing. How, how old for you? cannabis. It's kind of a weird thing too because you can't you can't trademark cannabis companies. So you have to trademark clothing and just yeah uh, as a as a for now at least or whatever. Uh, for, how old were you when that movie came out? Sorry, we're stuck on Sandlot, but I'm gonna go transition real quick. No, but like, how old were you? Um, I was 11. I think at, I, was, I shot it when I was 11. It came out when I was 12. Or at that point, 10, you 12. at 12, you know what your dick works like. At that point, you're just starting to figure it out. You're in a hit movie. Mm -hmm. Are you just crawling in 12 year old, 13 year old <laughs> at that time? Jesus. Right? Like, what is the, what is the, well, that's bro, a young like, kid, I right? Up, I, when I was 13, I think the Titanic came out. Yeah. And like, I had 13 year old girls in my class, like, literally were discussing, like, I want to marry Leo. I want to be with Leo. Blah, blah, yeah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah. Right? Like, so I was just like a jealous kid being like, what the, what's some, no one's talking to me. I want you to go, fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. Like, it's true. I was like, I know how to draw too. Uh, it's true. Was it wild? It was a different time. You know what I mean? So, like, we didn't have Instagram or any of these things. So it was a much more quiet, like, regular experience junior high yeah i was a i was a popular kid but the film wasn't like that big of a deal yet so it wasn't like a huge thing that didn't happen till later when which is even better thing which is even better in my ended opinion. up being a thing yeah 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 i was running around tagging on walls with my friends and being a kid skateboarding and doing shit like that at that time yeah we were into girls you know what i mean but i would like, have been such a prick I'm like i'm in a movie yeah. everyone better recognize yeah mostly my friends it's usually better if they're like trying to use that to do whatever, and you just kind of like, like shrug hey. it off. Yeah. So yeah, you're because like the little trophy they bring around. Like, yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, and it's also you know you kind of you're you're it's an assist, right? You're assisting your homies. You're just throwing layups. You're just like Yo. yeah. But sometimes homies put you in weird situations off of your name. Yeah, where I'm you not end that. up in situations where you're like. I hate you for putting me here. Yeah, it's it gets a little weird where it's just like if that's the only thing you want to talk about, you know what I mean? But when you're young, right, you don't know any better, right? Mm -hmm. It's like when you're older now discussing it, it's different because yeah. you, you already understand the, the manipulation of the whole the whole circumstance. Yeah. But when you're young, you're like, all you want to do is kind of be praised and kind of show love to your boys in a way, right? I didn't, uh, I definitely didn't use it to my advantage, let's say that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've been Did always kind of like play the, the back end. The back, shit. yeah. For me, it changed. For me, like when I was younger, I wanted to be the, the center of the, the attention. And now that I got older and I'm like, already had to hustle, make a lot of moves, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just kind of like, all right, I just want peace and quiet, you know? So it kind of switched for me. I know. I want peace and quiet, but I need attention because that's the only way I know how to make money. So it's like a weird double-edged sword, right? Yeah. The thing I hate is the thing I need. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. It, it's unfortunate because I would rather just be off in a fucking villa in Tuscany somewhere growing olives or something and chilling the fuck out. You know what I mean? I agree. But but at the same time, I got to play the game. I'm not fortunate enough to be able to disappear into the, the know, wilderness. But, like but, but you are Instagram. fortunate enough to just have the life you have, right? Like we're all kind of like, this is better than doing anything else. Oh, hell yeah. we're doing. But I wish I was on a yacht. In, in what regard? Like if I got up in the morning and I was trading and it, I had a simple life and I got to enjoy the rest of the time, it would be great. I just watching think romanticizing scale, the trading part. Like a big huge business i don't know that i have the want to like have anything that big because i see that most of these guys are 
it's it's not a good place to oper- operate from. You know what I mean? You just they, headaches they don't nonstop, have a yeah. lot of peace. You know what right. I mean? Right. Well, you're a creative too. Like that's what I struggle with. Luckily, I have a business partner that kind of like helps take the brunt of like the bullshit that I don't want to deal with because I, you know, yeah, I'm it's, a creative. it's a balance, bro. It's a balance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. absolutely. I can definitely I have the mindset to create things and bring them into fruition. I do not want to deal with the X's and O's behind that in a lot of regards, though, because right. it's just that's lame shit. It's not for me. You know what I mean? I get it. But we are in this time period where you have to balance. You can't just be an artist anymore either. This is the time where you have to be able to do it all. You have to take accountability. Well, it's it. more of like back in the day, if you were an artist, your only way for exposure was through like networking, right? Like doing the meeting the right people now. Finding a good art dealer. Right. That was now. Pump it. It's like music, right? Like you can just go make it at home. You can go make Instagram content for your art and hopefully it pops, right? Like we know plenty of people that blew up from social media that normally probably wouldn't have been given a chance 20 years ago. Oh, definitely. The machine isn't going to feed that. The beauty of this time, though, for all these kids is that they can create anything they want and have their own platform to go direct to consumer. Yeah. It doesn't work for everybody, but there's so many little niche markets. I mean, look at all the guys that tour that you don't listen to their music, but they live a good life, they make a good amount of money, yeah. and it's literally their own little fan base that follows them around the country and the world, and most people have never even heard of them probably, you know what I mean? Right. Which is a really great place to be operating from because you're not Justin Bieber like fucking hiding, walking down the street, you're like, you can still enjoy your life. Some people know who you are, some people don't, but it's, it's, a, it's a good thing, you know? Yeah, you just gotta find your number. It's like, hard what being are you... Tom Cruise. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? I mean, he looks like he has a great life. Have you ever seen that interview with Brad Pitt where they asked him if he had a superpower and if he could be invisible? And what did he say? The look on his face, bro. He said, and he takes this big sigh and then it like gets real somber and you're like, fuck, man, I feel bad for this guy because he's just like, I would just like go to a store and look through some clothes or grab a coffee. And it's like, this motherfucker just wants to go walk down the street and not have people chasing him, basically. Yeah, but he's also a little full of shit. You want to go to the (laughs) store one day, and then the other 364 days, you're like, I'm banging Angelina Jolie and every A-list act. I'm Brad Pitt, right? I don't want to be guy who's anonymous at the store for a living, right? Yeah. I'd rather be Brad Pitt. I mean, it is good to be a producer, right? Producers tend to get the best of everything. Because they, they get, yeah, they're on both Everybody lines. who's supposed to know who they are does. Does. Uh, yeah. Casting couch, baby. You get and to fuck your way else, through Hollywood. Everybody yeah, else Because you have leverage right? on both ends, right? Yeah. The star wants. Get the money. But, yeah, the star knows who you are. And then. They end up with the best of the best of the best, right? Yeah. And they get to go about their life being almost Unseen. unrecognizable. Yeah. Right? Unless you're Harvey Weinstein. He was unrecognizable for a long, long time. You know what I mean? He's definitely going to be unrecognizable now (laughs) if he comes out of there. I mean, I think he's going to die in prison Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But that dude lived a longer life than most people before jail. Doing what he was doing? Oh, yeah, bro. I mean, the catalog that Miramax created was, I mean, that's film history, you know? And unfortunately, the guy, power corrupts, and the guy was a piece of shit. Yep. Any stories that you personally heard? That kind I of heard trip you out about him. Uh, not, not only him, but just in general, something that you always kind of like reflect back to. And like, I can't even believe that happened. You know, nothing directly involving me. So it doesn't really, it's not. Really I, I have an issue with the children thing. I, I don't have the craziest issue with uh, adult stuff sometimes. Cause I'm like, I, bro, I, you made your bed, right? Like you wanted, you wanted that role. And it was like, I have a problem has, with him stopping people from working. Yeah, that's an issue like for that sure. that control power thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where but isn't like, that everything? I can dead your whole career because nah, that's corny. one, yeah, I don't you look fuck down on either. me. Or There's a, there to has to be a balance way. a little bit, right? You know Dame Dash slapped the shit out of Harvey Weinstein, right? Really? For that shit. Yeah, Dame Dash slapped the shit out of him. I could see that. Dog shit out of him at a fucking party somewhere because he, he said something to somebody and Dame right. just... I like that. Just cock yeah. back and slap the fuck out of him. I like that once in a while. Yeah, but I would cock block anyone that pissed me off too. Like I would b- burn careers if I could. I just don't have the power. But if someone annoyed me in some way and I could be like, yo, delete their Instagram so they don't fucking can work anymore, I would. <laughs> you don't have people you hate? I have so many people I just don't like. I mean, me personally, if I don't like you, I just stay away from you. you yeah, know? but he's uh, he's got a power trip right like he goes like get rid of him. i get what he has i just don't think it's it's like he uh, is not just power i mean remember when tmz caught him at the airport you knew who his driver was was rafael perez i don't know who that is rafael perez is denzel washington's character in training day oh rafael perez is the real cat from rampart 
that was the the gangbanger that ended up doing time for bank robbery that is involved in everything and all of those stories. Yeah, because he wants a goon around with him. Row. Yeah, he wants a goon. That's not just a goon, bro. That's like a, a underworld level figure of like L.A. mob politics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to understand that this shit was like between Hollywood and gangsterism and all of these things in that era. I think that you can see, remember in, uh, you ever seen Be Cool with the... Yep. And remember Travolta what, and DeVito. Yeah. Remember what he said? Remember he was in the, he's like, he's like, ah, Hollywood. Yeah. He's like, but Car- uh, Harvey Keitel tells him, he said, this is the music business. We're all gangsters, right? He just let him know. Like, you're not the only fucking wise guy at the table. Like, we're all fucking wise guys. Right. No matter what you look at, you know? Right. But we look up to wise guys. We look up to people that We've are... We've romanticized asking, that. Right. But it was shown in the proper light to us to romanticize it. For some reason, Joe Pesci doesn't come off the wrong way in those films because he wasn't a piece of shit. He had some type of morals and a code, right? We romanticize that. If you showed these right, guys exactly. a lot of sense. That, that but they also didn't show like the true, you know, there was not really that much. I mean, some of these guys were like legit serial killers. So. Yeah, so where's the moral you know code? I mean? Joe Pesci is yeah. a serial killer. In Goodfellas, we just saw a few. Murders. I mean, the real, the real cat, you know. Yeah, but can I tell you guys serial. something? The difference, right? I romanticize Italian mob in, let's say, New York. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I can't take account for every murder that I've heard, right? Mm-hmm. But for the murders that I've heard, it's always involved with people that they're dealing with. It's not like random people off the street. There yeah, might have been that's still a few murder, dude. I mean, that's fine. But there's in, politics of murdering people 24-7. I mean, if you get in, if you get into it. They're, it they're the mob crazy. too. Right. But I'm agreeing with the fact that I'm okay with all that. A lot you of guys, guys are, you're saying you're no, not. Uh, no, but you, we were to, no, Harvey Weinstein. I mean, I that's the mob too. That's the mob. The you're business, telling me. The business end of the mob wasn't okay with it. Because some of these guys got a little out of hand. And of course. I, oh, I know. The 70s and 80s. There's always like extremes, the, you know. These certain characters and figures like Roy DeMeo and a couple of these cats that were like known as like, at one point they had to handle their own beef because they knew this dude was like, he's a psychopath. You know what I'm saying? Where I guess to a line where it's like, okay, this dude's killing because he can kill now and now it's out of hand. I guess I get his point. I guess going back to Harvey Weinstein, I guess he was, saying he was he extorting was right. workers. I'm not, right? I'm not di- I'm saying what he did was right. I'm just, He's just saying, the mob technically I'm just too. saying if a girl comes up to me and goes, I'll fuck you uh, and I'll do something for you or I'm not going to fuck you and I'm going to do something for you, I'm going to choose the girl that fucks me. Yes. In life. I, In his situation, I think that it was a little more coerced, yeah. coerced than that from yeah. what has come out. You I know? get that, but I'm ugly. I've had to coerce girls to fuck me my whole life. I mean, Harvey, yeah, I mean, Harvey definitely wouldn't have have been in the position he was in if he wasn't who he was you know right I mean? of course yeah. and that is like just part of growing up in life and figuring out that you can be a really good looking dude but at the end of the day some sloppy dude that has a lot of power is probably going to be a bigger catch than you right and after a while when you are tra- power dynamics on earth well that's just the power dynamics of anything right like if i go hang out with fucking michael jordan right now and he tells me to do something i'm most likely going to do it versus just val asking me to do it right i'm just enamored by someone that wields that much power right you're like wow that's jordan and if he goes Kirill, you want to do heroin with me i'd be like fuck yeah if val goes you want to do heroin with me i'd be like dude you're out of your goddamn mind so it's like there is that like we do idolize people with power and let them get away with way more heavy lies right? the crown because you do have to understand that you have that that power yeah but how do you how do you things. remove that power how do i get laid and go i have no like yeah like where how am i supposed to walk around life and be like i'm normal i'm normal you're like brad pitt he has power right yeah. every girl on this planet would most likely have sex with brad pitt right how is he supposed to remove that power and be like yo just get to know me and then we'll fuck <laughs> right? Like, how do you remove Brad Pitt from Brad Pitt? doesn't make sense. Well, it becomes a, a situational, right? It becomes, a, a, a dad relies on the person. Yeah, either he understands the He either he gets that or he, it's the same thing as like knowing jujitsu and having a black belt. And you're not going to go beating up everybody in the street. Bro, yeah, but, yeah, but nobody knows that, right? You're Brad Pitt. You instantly, traffic clears for you. 
your whole entire life is reinforcing you are more powerful than everyone else. Every girl that comes up to you isn't because she's interested in you. She's like, that's fucking Brad Pitt. There's levels to it, though. Yeah. Because I'm obviously just... on that level, you can see Bezos' wife or Lauren Sanchez right. looking at Leonardo DiCaprio in a certain way. Of course. In those interviews. I would right? fuck in Leo. Those, those things, right? I mean, she don't want to be with Leo compared to Jeff. That's a different lifestyle, right? Well, yeah, Jeff has more power than Leo. A lot more. Right? And like that she world, chose to worldly, be with that guy. Worldly supervillain type power right at right. this point and luckily he's only sending it packages so even overnight brad for pitt us. understands that there's there's levels to that shit brad pitt would not cross harvey weinstein in his heyday because brad pitt would cease to be fucking brad pitt right right, right. in an instant but brad pitt also wields power i wield power of course you wield power yeah. everyone who's above someone else in the social scale yeah. wields some sort of power right it's like at the end of the day an influencer with five million followers and an influencer with one million followers the brand is going to the one with more power yeah 100%. that's it and we just reinforce that shitty Eyeballs. behavior yeah yeah i don't even understand like i watched that documentary quiet on the set and you're just like who's attracted to children like that it's like not, who's yeah. fucking kids and like <laughs> it's why it's absolutely I mean, bro, there's people insane. in villages piping cheeps like yeah, but they're not but that's but yeah but like, they're but that's a village mentality right like you're doing it in privacy in darkness you're like a villager right you you probably have a different outlook on life like this is a grown man paying taxes in los angeles who's like yo i want to fucking lick drake bell's asshole right and you're yeah. just like yeah that was sad bro it was fucking sad it was sad the watching his father have to deal with the fact that they, i only felt bad for they, his father in the whole they, documentary that he knew something was wrong and that they totally, this is what money and power does, is that they'll find a way to isolate the problem, right? And then continue on down the path that they want to continue on down. Yeah, I mean. Because it's know, a band-aid. They're just like, yo, just chill out here. You're like, well, everything's fine. Look, he's going to make 20000 this month. literally just pitted him against his son, made it seem like he was the problem. And they used his thirst for his career continuing to get rid of the problem, right? Right. Yeah. It, right, it's, it's money. It just comes back to money. Like, yo, we got you with money. We we got you with forty thousand this month, bro. Just relax. Mm -hmm. Just calm down. He's, he's gonna make a lot of money th this year. All right, fine. Right, and then when you're like licking the kid's butthole, you're like, hey, you know, what I mean, there's kids getting molested for free. You're at least on Nickelodeon, bro. What did Jack say in Departed? He said, he said, your father. What about my father? Oh, he was a guy that could have done fucking anything. But he worked at the airport. What the fuck's wrong with that? And he's like, Leo's getting offended by it. And he's like, I'm just saying, he worked at the fucking airport. The guy could have done anything. He said, never wanted money. He said, your Uncle Jackie was crazy. He would have killed my whole fucking family if I knew that you were sitting here talking to me. He said, he said but I, he said he didn't want money. You can't do anything with a guy like that. Like, if you don't have the thirst for things. Yeah, you can't, you can't buy a guy. Them. You can't control them, right? There's nothing nothing that somebody in power can do with somebody that's not after money. Those are some of the strongest people, by the way, that do things out of actually liking it which is rare like continuously yeah. for like let's say 15 years and the money follows them on its own those are very rare and hard people to beat because they don't care about I any incentives I they don't care about any incentives but they're very very powerful Barry Sanders the best to ever play the game Joe Rogan power, right yeah they're just not like he just retired they said don't you want to beat Walter's record he said no doesn't care yeah I don't want to beat Walter's record. Mm -hmm. Would he have? Of course. Could he have traded, demanded a trade to a team to win fucking Super Bowl after Super Bowl? Of course. He didn't care, bro. Like, that just wasn't in his thing. He, he owns car dealerships in Oklahoma now. Right. That, you know, not everybody has it, you know? That's a big move by athletes, owning car dealerships. Yeah, John Elway did it in, in Denver. Fucking too. Russell Westbrook out yeah. here. Well, it has to be a level of it, of it owning too, and it's also a level of like, yeah. car, there's private car dealerships and there's franchise car, car dealerships. Apparently car dealerships is a very good business. It is. People tend to do is. pretty well in it once they have a, like a foothold in a place. and. Uh, Right, because it becomes like it's just recognizable for your whole town. Yeah, it's a necessity. Like, oh, Russell Westbrook, fucking Jeep. That's right. where I got my Jeep. Also, car washes. Dude, they have a good streamlined experience. It's not Tesla like level of like convenience, but all of their electronic paperwork filing and shit, they they get they make moves over there, bro. The Russell That's Westbrook. Good, yeah, yeah, I bought a I car it. from them. It was good. It was easy. They give you a little zip drive with all the paperwork. I said, oh, you guys are fucking. Oh, they treat you like royalty. I was in there for yeah. three hours filling out paperwork, arguing. Where? Russell Westbrook over my two Jeeps. Yeah, in Van Nuys. He has a, he has a uh, what is Jeep it called? Dodge dealership. Jeep Dodge. Jeep. Oh, yeah. Russell Westbrook Chrysler Dodge Jeep yeah. or whatever. Really? Uh-huh. No, yeah. I think Mark Wahlberg has one too. He has the, she the Chevy, Chevy. But he wasn't, Chevy. He wasn't it's promoting. Like in Ohio or something? Where is it? It's in a weird But it's state. in a perfect spot. Where's I would it? I would open it in middle America. Obviously. Of Forget That's about big is, cities. Bro. It's you know That's where all those fortunes are built. Correct. What people don't know is that Cleveland is one of the richest places on earth. Yeah. People don't know that about You just have Ohio. to live in Cleveland. I mean, 
yeah, Cleveland's rough right now, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool city actually. But, but yeah, there's a, my friend lives like right in little Italy right there. And he was telling me about it, but there's a little cemetery up there and literally like half of the Rust Belt Titans are buried in that cemetery outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Like I'm talking like industry leading fucking right. some of the first, you know, fortune style American families and shit. So it is a, a slept on area. Kind of Everybody wants to be in the mix. It's like a village, bro. It just feels like a village when you what? live in the, when you live in these kind of cities. It just feels like dead and slow. So you watch these mob movies and yeah. you romanticize New York and the five families, but you find out that the Midwest ran everything. Right? Right. Which was weird as fuck. Like the 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 five families didn't run Vegas. That was fucking the outfit and fucking Kansas City. You know what I mean? Like all of these other areas. You find out that Buffalo was more in play, like power structure wise, than actually the city was. Why? Because the city's chaos, bro. There's always going to be a dude that wants to come. Like there's no longer like there. climb, right? Yeah, there. exactly. You know Too I mean? much competition. You got to go. You got to go somewhere where it's that. These guys could sit there forever, control everything. Yeah, because right? who's watching Kansas? They left that Correct. city. You know Kansas that, right? Have you ever heard the stories about that, where they just picked up and left LA because it was just chaos here? Like the whole Bugs and Siegel thing was like, yeah, LA's been an open city forever because they came here. They like to control everything. And they figured out very quickly that the politicians were all crooks. There was too many little gangs. There's too many just weird shit going on. And they were like, yeah, this, this isn't for us. We're just, yeah, because there's too many people to brush off, bro. That's and just, and, and, and they, would, city. they would act like they and were with slow. the shit and, uh, and just... And the city's not they built to have sad. a lot of people. That's that's another problem. Right? Yeah, it's an interesting thing because it wasn't, you know, prior to uh, prior to like the depression, LA was a very like little dust bowl type of town. And uh, it was touted to be like a white Protestant community, like come out West to live here. And it has a very interesting history of it, Hollywood happening. And then it just exploding as this like, weird anomaly that was never supposed to be as big as it was you because know I mean? it, because it's like dreams come true here type of thing so everybody's coming here it's like a gold rush type of thing right it had like uh a lot to do with like the infrastructure of the san pedro pier of of uh the harbor there of like there was a lot of things in play obviously uh um its position to you know the far east like there's a bunch of different things that happen but a lot of, of military, heavy military industry coming out here and building it up after World War II, during World War II, right. right? And all of these things. But there's a lot of really cool history in LA about like this little fucking city that just exploded. And the reason it's so, the infrastructure is so bad here is because it happened faster than they could keep up with it. Like it wasn't supposed to be this big fucking huge sprawling area. It was just a fucking town you know what i mean it was never san francisco but then it ended up you know becoming something else right it's an ironic city built on dreams but more failures here than anything there's a lot right? it's, of, the, it's, it's the most failed most failed most failures in the world probably happen in this in this city right you there's know more failed people chase you know and it's also viewed as the place to make your dream come true yeah because anything's possible but also these people come from from small ponds exactly it's Big people that come from places pond. that don't yeah. have grit that's the issue if you you're come coming from new york to la you have a higher chance of yeah, doing new york well is obviously the fast one of the fastest pace places on earth right right so the hustle that you have to, to uh, survive have to be able to make it in new york you know that's what they say you make it here you make it anywhere yeah, I in LA, it's it's still there. It's a little bit slower. I think it suffers from uh, the the difference in time zones. Because don't forget, by the time fucking LA gets to work, New York's been working for three hours. And mm -hmm. guess what? My mental when I'm here, when New York's five o'clock, I'm already checked out here. So really, in reality, the workday is kind of here from like nine to two usually. Right? It's Whoa. five hours, and they're like, "Oh, New York's done working. My phone's starting to die down." Right. You want to be outside. You want to go do things out here too. Like yeah, the weather's better. Yeah. Um, the flow is different. Like in New York, you're like, oh, the weather sucks. I'll work till nine. You and know then, what I mean? Like, and then I can still go get a meal, right. go see a show, go out for the Correct. rest of the night and then wake up the next day and do it again. That's why the city sucks. Yeah, no, it's true. We have, we have probably some of the worst nightlife in the country. I'd rather be in Texas for nightlife than Los Angeles. Anywhere but LA. Yeah. I it, don't uh, it is a understand weird... the appeal of house parties. I don't I like mean, that because... And those are the better options to be right, honest. Like... And it's unfortunate. <laughs> right. If that's the best option, I'm like, yeah. that doesn't... 
entice me enough. Speaking of Texas, this is a random uh, uh, like segue into this, but you guys saw what Joe Rogan did with Tucker Carlson when he took him to his club yesterday. Oh, the Kill Tony they did? Yeah, so no, Kill Tony has a show in yeah. uh, Joe Rogan's uh, stand-up comedy club. Who? I heard Tony that. Tony yeah. Kill Tony. It's Tony Hinchcliffe is a comedian. They do that live. Right, but don't they do it inside a spaceship? The mothership or whatever. Well, it's not a sp- yes, the the club is called the mothership. Right, but, but this is Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Joe Rogan owns it, right? Yeah, and then they have they have that. Sh- he does a show where he has people show up, right? They they roast every. Or they get roasted on the on the. Yeah, it's like uh, essentially, dude. This is wild because the show blew up like crazy. Essentially, it's like a bunch of comedians. In I've a, seen in a it, dais, yeah. right? Like six people, comedians. Uh-huh. You know, once in a while they did like Sugar Sean. Like they'll do anyone that's relevant that I've like fucks with comedy, yeah. right? And then like they bring up like comedians to do shit, and then they just roast them. And if they bomb or they do well, and I like that Joe Rogan randomly brought Tucker Carlson onto the stage. He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna show you my club." He's like, "Yo, do stand up comics even make any money?" And Joe Rogan's like, "I mean, the guy that does the show sold out Madison Square Garden two times." He's like, "No way." He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "You want to go check it out?" I was like, "Sure." The show is playing, and then he just walks him through the backstage and walks him right onto the stage, and he goes, yo, this is the show. Sits him down, and Tucker Carlson just gets shredded. <laughs> for like, That's amazing. It was one of the best things I've I seen. I gotta watch it. It's so good. And I like that Tucker Carlson took it on the chin, just laughing, having a good time. And He is hard to not like, even though he's like obviously far super up. yuppie. He, nah, just like, he's. I, I don't mind his, his take on politics. I, like, I actually can concur with a lot of things that he says. He just looks like a yuppie. He's just dude. like a soft. He looks like a... He like looks a, like a down south yeah. frat boy. You know what I mean? He's I got the that. haircut. He's got the polo shirt. The like, a hedge fund, yeah. like a hedge fund cutie pie, basically. Yeah, yeah, like not even like New York, though. He doesn't have that aura. He has like a fucking North Carolina, yeah. Maryland mm-hmm. fucking, you know... I agree. Like what's the the what is it boat what the fuck is that the boat the, the vines the uh <laughs> vineyard vines like he's the oh, vineyard yeah. vines type of cat he wears yeah. fucking boat shoes and dockers and, and I agree. polo shirts I agree but but he's great though I love, him, I like him I like Tucker and he's I got just, fucking balls bro yeah I like that he's spe- even if he's not right about what he's saying i like that he still is willing is, to fucking put himself in the dangerous like what is position right? what is exactly right? there's no right or wrong we used right? to just have our own like we're all living our separate realities right correct we're sharing a reality at this moment yeah. there's so much to that like my mind works differently there's no right wrong this, I agree. that he's giving you his, his opinion of his yeah. reality and yeah maybe there's some business there's a business end to it but this is how this guy feels. He's also doing things that other people won't do when they tell him not to do it. You know what I mean? Like that dude was not supposed to go interview Putin. But he still did it. Believe it. You know what I'm saying? Right. We did, we haven't seen the end of the fallout of that. Either. We also don't know the group chats, right? That are people listening, like putting him into saying, they told Yo, don't him do this, do to, that. No, they literally, he had some. I mean, it was one of the worst interviews he had I've one ever of seen his, in my life. He talks about it. He said, I had one of my sources say to meet me somewhere in DC and tell me that I am not to fucking do this interview basically or to even think about it because we know i mean he talks about it they the had, way my brain his, works though when he says that story I, he's making that it up. could be a joke it could be could it's be a, a fake, great marketing could be a fake thing too right how am i supposed I to doubt it they probably had a shit he said how do you know and they said we had access to your telegram simple as that i mean listen i believe both i'm like 50 and 50 eh, on those I'm things a conspiracy theorist it's a good way to drum up eyes for the interview which was one of the worst things i've ever seen the interview. Yeah. It's like garbage. Like, why would you even do that? Like, you literally didn't push on Putin al- at all. I know you couldn't because it probably fucking he wanted slit to leave, throat. Because he wanted to leave Moscow, bro. Who? <laughs> Tucker. Tucker Carlson. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, so it's like, cool, you did the interview. You did the interview, but it's like, yo, me doing an interview with OJ Simpson and just talking about everything but the murder. Well, you could talk about that with OJ and you're going to make it out. If, if, well, that's if my point. Is portray like, it in the wrong light. With listen, to nobody's us, ever going to see it. To us, it was bad. It to Tucker, play. it was like, to the naive eye, it's, oh my God, he went to talk to Putin, He right? was an American gen- journalist in the Kremlin, bro. The fact that that is even a thing, I mean, that's where you guys come from. So you know what that means. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, for sure. It's it's uncharted territory. For yeah, I disagree. I think that they have similar. They are more pro Tucker Carlson than any other hundred person, right? So it's like he's going in there friendly. He's Steven Seagal there, right? Like he is not an enemy, right? But you say the Russia. wrong thing, and you might not be Steven. Seagal. I understand that, but you know? like, yeah, you just do the interview to get the clicks, right? 
you didn't do good journalism. Like, sorry, like I don't I mean, find Tucker Carlson to be a journalist by any stretch of the imagination because, you know, they're all paid off by companies to run things. He's really good at running a monologue. Yeah, yeah. I get it. But he and didn't that works it. on X and right. on on our new that works, format. That works in first of all, America he's is a fucking all actor. Bro. That's what I'm saying. He's they're not a journalist. Actors, he's an though, actor. Bro. They're yeah. all actors. The all guy who wrote the speech might be the yeah, journalist. journalists are the guys that break stories and get killed over it. I agree There's with you. There's not a lot of longevity in journalism. Yeah, yeah. it's not news, <laughs> it's entertainment. Yeah. Well, you know journalism I mean? is, I don't even think it's a real thing. I think it's just. No, it is. Journalism is absolutely real. Like, you go and, like, people who cover it wars. It used to be. Now you don't get That's the, what I'm the trying to say. I want. just don't and think. And now they know that there's there's levels to this shit and that journalists don't get rewarded. You know what I mean? Journalists yeah, because you're, are, are dealing with whistleblowers and breaking stories. And that. At this stage in the game, we find out is not not the best place. Yeah, to I mean, what's snitched. the difference between signing up for a draft? What are you doing? You're just risking your life for a bunch of capitalist pigs, right? You at don't the have end a the choice. Day. I mean, no, it's a draft. Oh, fine, no draft, right? People who are like right now want to join the military, right? You're like that's some people join it for safety, right? It's a it's a it's a leverage right. thing. But someone who's got they come an from places. Junkie. They come some of those. Right, but that's what most Some of the journalists are. Some of them that are like career driven and want the benefits from it. I mean, signing up for the military has a hell of a lot of signing bonuses and repercussions for like college, and a lot of people aren't aren't self taught free thinkers. So, and then some of them are running from bad situations from bad places. There's a lot of, of you know what's things funny about journalists. Journalists, they're like king snitches that. That their whole deal catch is themselves to, yeah. in in lying about their own truth which sooner or later. What do you mean? Meaning like that they're just willing to. They're like, yo, I want to like get this out. I want to get the truth out. I want to get right. the story out. And then sooner or later, they get faced with like, oh, but you can't do this. And then they're like, so then they're li they end up lying what sooner or later. Do what? Like sooner or later, somebody tells them like, yo, you can't say the story or you can't. Well, yeah, publish but that's that. not their fault. That's someone else suppressing it. That's right, not, but if a real journalist would be like, yo, fuck that, I won't work for you. It? Where are they going to publish it then? I don't well, know. Anthony publish, Bourdain is a journalist. Anything. Anthony Bourdain was a journalist. Now you can publish anything. It's true. You can have your own blog in two seconds. Right? Yeah, yeah. Just no one might see it. There was a book on Houdini. Um, have you guys ever seen this? So they did a book about Houdini's life. And basically it was a take on, he was one of the first intelligence uh, officers um, like pre-war time. Because basically they would let him into all these countries all over the Far East and Europe during wartime. And he was a master lockpick and a contortionist. And there's a story about this dude was most likely like one of America's first spies. And he was going around to all of these places, photographing all of these jail cells and all of these different places because they would let him in. Very, very interesting take. And it makes you think, I think there's another one. There's a movie about a dude that ran a big uh, game show in the 70s. Yeah, it's called Th uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, but they yeah. claim he made it all up. There's like, there's no evidence he worked for them. Well, but a great movie. Yeah. And of course, he made it all up. I mean, yeah, but it was George Clooney directed. I think yeah, it was a great film. And Sam Rockwell yeah, Sam and Rockwell's Drew Barrymore, amazing, yeah. fucking mm -hmm. awesome movie. Great movie. You watch that movie and you're like, oh, I want to do that. Yeah. When they send that couple to Germany yeah. for their fucking wedding party, they're like, Why are we going to Germany? He's like, and then you find out he's got like jobs to kill people in Germany. It's an interesting thing. Yeah, it makes a great story. Well, it makes you think about well, we think of James Bond, and James Bond isn't very effective in that field, right? realistically like i mean he's distracted by pussy one of the worst <laughs> one of the worst spies possible literally uh you really want somebody that's welcome everywhere right i don't know i mean it's listen, an interesting take i wow. i grew Do up you think i grew gonna, up okay, in circumstances where you see something say nothing you know what i mean so that's just how i grew up me too do you, you know think the mean? world is so racist that's why we don't have a black james bond because he can't go everywhere he's gonna be the the idris is gonna be double oh five double oh five wow they they so they even pay that he's downgraded from seven i think he's gonna be the like the alter ego in this new film i don't think he was i think he was too old to be i think they're trying to go with somebody that can do like 10 films right now well you needed the longevity right yeah Fucking Daniel craig's been doing if it, for it had 15, happened like yeah yeah if idris had been the guy like seven years prior coming like after the wire and a couple of films, I think that they probably would have went that route. He's a beast actor too. That Amazing. guy. People are going to freak out. I think he's going to be the, great as the, the character that they're going to play him. Right. As. Oh, I just, cause he'll be know. way cooler than a young James Bond. Anyway, obviously with age comes that type of like, aura. but black doesn't crack. So he probably could run it for 20. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Idris Elba was a, uh, started out as a door guy at Caroline's comedy club in New York. 
I wasn't working yet there. I was like a graphic designer, but like five years before. Interesting. Vin yeah. Diesel ran a door too as a security yeah. guard, right? Uh-huh. It's kind of wild. It's not a bad gig if you're trying to fucking meet everybody and get people into clubs or get people into shit. I mean, it's a, it's right time, a, position, right place. It's a position of power. Right? There you go. That's how the was the door guy in New York City for like Marquee Avenue. Yeah. He's in like every, you know, whatever movies that come out once once a year, he's in a few. Cause he's in a position of power to let you through that door and yep. you go, Oh I, I gotta door pay man. him back. Door man. Yeah. Was is the Harvey Weinstein of nightlife. Yeah. He's not fucking him, but he's wielding power. Yeah. Yeah, like you meet everybody. People like you. People take a liking to you. You do a favor for them. That's why it's good to Things be. Things go in your favor. It definitely good to be in places where you get to meet people. Obviously, if you're not int- a crazy you want, introvert. You, yeah, know, you want high traffic. Yeah, you like, want high traffic of people. Yeah. yeah, High traffic of influential people if you're trying yeah. to, to climb the social ladder. I mean, that's the Just make any moves, right? Key. If you want to build any business yeah. or anything, you want, to have, you want to have people that you can bring around make money with i agree that's why it's hard right when people are like oh go, go back to school if people are like 30 some years old and they don't have people that they're around or they can build something what are, what are the places that you can go to network if you don't exactly. know anybody yeah. right it's like it's hard but you can go back to what are you saying you no, i'm saying back. i'm saying like some people like get stuck right they don't have anybody let's say like bro some kids are raised in south carolina and they just don't they're like 30 years old and he couldn't figure out his life where do you go to meet people to fucking build a business if all of a sudden he just got it that then you shouldn't to, build a business because you don't have the fucking brain power to leave north carolina and go to a place and hustle right that's just a guy who's just gonna have you know everybody wants to be an entrepreneur because of shark tank right now right it's not it's for like, everybody it yeah. isn't it it's not it's everybody doesn't have the work ethic everybody doesn't have the mindset everybody doesn't have yeah. the wins and losses like that they can deal with you know what i mean there's yeah. a you know the world needs uh you know ditch diggers too everybody wants to be a chief but like let's be honest maybe that's not the best set of fucking yeah. rules for everybody to be you, operating from you have you know to know be realistic saying? in eighth yeah, grade sure. i was like oh i'm gonna be a basketball player and then i shot a basket into my own net on the first game and I was like, cool, guess I'm good at art. Uh, and that's it, right? You just got to get humbled a little bit. Mm-hmm. And a lot of entrepreneurs, I wanted you know, to play it's just ball so too. easy to say entrepreneur. That's I'm 5'6", it probably wasn't in the cards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The guys that are 5'6 make the league sometimes. Are you a Jew? Yeah. No, I'm not. But but in general, like, you know, I might as well be. I'm built like one anyway. You know, so it's the same shit. I get it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Uh, it, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Jews are like Diddy, I wanted right? to be Michael Jordan. That wasn't in the cards for me. Fuck, Jordan wanted to be Jordan. And before his fucking, his little, his little height stretch that happened in high school, the odds of him being who he was was, was probably, yeah. probably not going to work. His brother was a much better baller than him, like pretty much throughout their whole, their whole growing up life. That's you know? got to suck being the other Jordan brother. I mean, look at Kobe. I mean, physically and yeah. attribute wise, they say that, you know. Allen Iverson was a much better physically gifted basketball player than Kobe Bryant. But he didn't Kobe worked work harder. Ethic. Kobe worked harder than everybody, bro. And the gap just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger off of his own determination, right? Yeah. Sometimes in life you can't actually outwork everybody else. You it's could. crazy the city loved Kobe so much they ignored the 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 child shit he did. The didn't he fuck like a seventeen year old girl or something? I don't. Was she underage? Yeah, I don't remember that. Crazy coming out. You can't make fun of Kobe in this town, which is crazy <sighs> to say that like that guy's off limits. You're like, dude, it's just a basketball player. I get he united this town. I understand that, but I don't think it was, was just the what nineteen. She yeah. was nineteen. Yeah, accused of what? Raping. Yeah. Okay, that's bad. Last time I checked, accused. Her story didn't check out though. Yeah, exactly. She, That's what I'm saying. Was, That's a power to, struggle, my friend. That's a guy with a lot of money who can suppress a lot of shit. Yeah. So we don't know if he raped her and then like... I mean, we don't know a lot of stories. I don't know anything because I wasn't yeah. there. But uh, right. in general, I think Kobe wasn't just... Because um, remember, during the Shaq era, the town didn't really embrace him as much as you think they did. I think over time, his long-term determination to stay in one place... Well, because he was loyal to the and team, And live and right? die by that Correct. was, like, what we attracted to. And what, then it became, like, a thing where you're like, damn, this cat... Stuck it through. He can be so determined and so tenacious that, like, yeah, everybody else in the world hates him, but why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Nobody wants to play against a guy like that. He was a goon. He was a goon. Yeah. That's yeah. the difference, you know? Yeah. And he didn't... He, like, obviously played it like business, but he's like, yo, I'm still gonna just stick with this team. And off the court, he was a pretty good... He was a pretty good dude. Quiet, stuck to himself, whatever. You know what I mean? He wasn't, like, a typical athlete. 
his was put here to play. Any ball girl that ball. had sex with Kobe she would claim that he raped her. <laughs> you know what I'm Which saying? Which is the problem, man, if he actually raped her. That's a problem of itself, right? It's that's like, a power that, struggle. I think for that, a girl and the guy, right? So the guy yeah. could have just fucking hooked up with her and she's like, oh, well, this will come up for me. I think the details of that case have, have been made public and that chick was like on some weirdo shit. Well, yeah, she was trying to come up. Just like, remember when the Not girl was that, trying to extort Kevin like, Hart? She had a lot of shit going on, like during that time and that day, like there was like multiple sexual encounters and a, it was some weird shit. Yeah. It doesn't mean he couldn't rape her. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm on know, 50. I don't give a I, fuck. I'm on both sides. About famous was people it, I don't think care. it was rape though. I think it was like sexual assault and Colorado was trying to like make it something Pin that it wasn't. I mean, right. if but I not, told you I'm I sexually sure. assaulted Would they were making a girl. it because of, of uh, her claiming it was sexual assault because of the way that uh, things I don't know. Maybe this is not the right the right line of, of, uh, of <laughs> thinking. Yeah. I mean, who cares, dude? I'm just going. I'm down not trying to stick up for the dude. Obviously, it was a bad situation. Somebody was upset with the alcohol. I always think that Jordan definitely did some fucked up shit, but too many people depend on the economy of Nike. Jordan, Jordan, they killed people for Jordan. Jordan's from Chicago, bro. Nike definitely. Jordan executed is from some Chicago people. in an era where Chicago was. Chicago, you know what I mean? And, and Jordan, oh, I don't care play. about the the Chicago and he's thing. He's a gambler, bro. And not only that, but Jordan, when he would be told, bro, like, "Yo, speak Kobe about this," he would be like, "I'm go good. out and went to play ball." Jordan played fucking high stakes gambling and partied all night during the fucking finals and type of shit. Right. He was a whole nother animal. Yeah, but don't forget how much economy is tied to Jordan, right? Like, if Jordan gets clipped for something bad, like Nike loses most of its value. Had the Nike deal not gone through, Jordan, I don't think would have been Jordan. If yeah. the one doesn't get made and the silhouette doesn't outsell every tennis shoe in history of time. Right, so you're telling me I Nike's not executing people for and, Jordan? And an NBA, like, he he uh, basically brought the NBA back from nothing, too. He built it, bro. Without right. without Jordan, the NBA so, is not what it is today. That's right. simple. I so, was there to be, I mean, I, like, romanticized the dude. I thought he was the best thing to fucking ever. I watched his videos, his things. I'm from LA and was a Bulls fan because of this cat because he was just so far ahead. That doesn't, right? yeah. I mean, but obviously the there's the protection. Day, right? End of the day, of course. End of the day, right? Looks, I mean, like I don't Nike's disagree with that. Gotta it looks like there was takes. some shit going. Of course, on. always there has obviously. to be shit going on. But that's business, everywhere. bro. That's just like you said before. You just got to. It's the mob. Like that's Nike part of knows, the game. like, do we want our stock to drop? Senators, people who are invested in it. Like, of there's course. so much people with power invested in Nike. And if someone's like, yo, like, let's shut this bitch up. Did you watch the film? Did you see the film of Jordan? Yeah. No, the one about Nike, about the deal. Oh, no. You should with, watch it. With it's Ben Affleck, dope. it's fire. It's I dope. met the guy yeah. who introduced, his dad introduced Jordan to the whole Nike thing. He was on like a, a on a vacation when I was in Greece. Yeah. And Nike was nothing. At the the biggest beast to pull the trigger though on everything was his mom. Yeah. The fact that she woke up his out of mom, this. His mom ran the show and that's cool that they showed that. Yeah. In reality is that like she had the final say on everything. But the fact that she was. Because Nike she, was trash. Yeah. Though. They had no basketball presence. It was all Converse and Adidas. So yeah. like him signing with Nike was like, yeah, what the fuck is this? And they had to bet everything on this dude who was basically a number three pick that had hit a big shot in a national championship. But they had no idea whether this was right. going to work out either. Yo, that was honestly his story is just nuts. It is pretty cool. All around. Yeah, I love that they like showed his mom in that light too about how like how she was the the the, the decision maker for the household and the. Matriarch. But you know, but you guys, the the craziest part about this is is right now the way we speak about business is we have perspective because of all the information we have access to. Yeah. She didn't have access to a lot of oh. this information, right? And also from the neighborhood that she came from. Yeah, the, yeah but she threaded she's also a black, you know how right? Many people do terrible business deals you don't you hear know what about. She did? Right? But I'm saying the fact that this lady Her had no, no, no idea how to do it. She took a stab in the dark and took no, a guess. No. It's she a calculated play, move, bro. It. She played it by feel. You know why? Because she fucked with Homeboy. Because Homeboy showed up. Oh, he kept coming back, yeah. And he kept calling. Yeah. And he kept appealing to her as a human being. More than and more than business. respecting yeah. her yeah. as a human right. being. Right. And she saw that the other sides of the table were corporate boardrooms that could care less. He was just another drop in a dime, right? It's another drop in the bucket. Right, but it's a risk both ways. He could have flopped completely, right? And of course. loving some guy that's nice to you worked out once, 
But how many times does it fail? Sometimes nowadays it fails for sure. <laughs> sometimes having all the information isn't the best isn't the best way to play it in business, yeah. right? Sometimes we think something's Blinded. going a certain way, and then some fucking meme coin comes out of nowhere, right? Yeah. You don't know what it's GameStop true. is going to do. You don't know what the power it's of true. some dude on the fucking internet writing fucking writing on Reddit is going to change the fucking financial world. Like it's true. This time, sometimes following your heart and just saying. Fuck it, I'm gonna write it out in this situation can be the biggest the biggest wins, right? Or the biggest losses. <laughs> or the biggest well, losses. Well, yeah, well, we only see the wins, right? That's yeah. what they make documentaries about mostly, it's, right? It's like who's good, yeah, who's watching a documentary about failed brands? Like once in a while, but mostly they're supposed only to be when stories they, of only inspiration. When they rise and then right. Fizzle. Inspirational stories come from That'd be a those rare film. moments. We should make a film about a brand just not getting off the ground. Oh, there's, uh, the problem is, uh, <laughs> dude, you, you know, know who, you know who just it was? Not getting I just watched ground. this thing. Do you know this dude, Jesse Seltzer? Seltzer, whatever. Sounds he, familiar. So he's like a serial entrepreneur kind of guy. And oh, is he it, talked is about, it Eitzer? Eitzer? Jesse Eitzer? Is that his name? Uh, the guy that runs, right? It's the cat that runs a lot. And he like, invents like companies and shit. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce his name. You're probably right. He, does he have curly, curly yeah. hair? Yeah. Um, wiry, skinny guy. Yeah. He Go just ahead. posted today about like his biggest failure. And he's like, yo, I did. Yeah. I did sheets. I don't know if you remember what sheets were. He's like, yo, we did like a Listerine strip, but we put caffeine on it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, at that time I saw five hour energy was doing 10 million units a week. And he goes, I can get in on this market and fucking mop the floor with them. I'm going to drop these little like energy Listerine strips. He's like, yo, we got LeBron to be the face of it. And he's like, week one, sales through the roof. Week two, sales even bigger. Week three, he's like, I called my wife. I was like, we're buying a house in the DR. Like, this is insane. Week four, Done. failed. And he goes, this is the problem. No amount of branding, no amount of attention, the product sucked and he goes they bought it and then they never well, bought it done, again bro that's because he's like the flavor was terrible and yeah. no one wanted to rebuy those it. strips are trash bro it's medical it's a taste medical even the listerine strips were like yeah. they were whack they feel weird they dissolve on your tongue they make your mouth feel weird afterwards it seems like yeah this is the easiest way to have a delivery system maybe for like a morphine patch or something right. but not for a fucking five hour energy drink. I like right. drinking coffee because I like drinking coffee. Yeah. I could use another one right now. You know what I mean? I'm going to sip cold brew or, or drink a coffee or enjoy something. Five hour energy has like a niche market with like truck drivers that like the way it tastes and just fucking jam those things at truck stops in different yeah. places. I used know? to take one every night when I was doing parties five nights a week. Also well, back then the health conscious uh, market wasn't really as heavy. Yeah. Now the health, the whole like you got to be healthy, you got to be aware, blah blah blah. So now everybody's looking for the healthiest option, and that's kind of the winner. The it, vegan right. wave died. We've seen that, huh? Thank God. Isn't pivot. that interesting? Sorry to pivot, but no, no. it's a good pivot. Vegan yeah. wave is fucking. Th that didn't. Ah oh, man, that, that didn't, didn't last. Yeah. Do you care to be healthy? Do I care? Yeah, I want to be healthy. Do you like it? Do you feel something from it when you? Yeah, when, when I'm you healthy. have a good streak. Yeah, absolutely. You, you feel clear, clear headed, like better energy. I will Probably. not sacrifice enjoying lifestyle for that though. Like Thank I you. don't want to go to, I, I tried the vegan thing I did for six months. I looked like death. It's Unfortunately it is very, it can be if you have a chef preparing if. proportion <laughs> meals it's for you. Pretty right, crazy. I right mean, fashion. if I had a chef, I but don't most of the population, it is not, you know what I mean? Cause you're going to eat bullshit. You're going to eat fucking soy burgers and whatever it is. Cause I know I did. I was side dish shorty, bro. What am I doing? I'm just eating carbs. Cause there's no, there's no substance to anything. So I did the vegan thing for like six months. I felt amazing. I fuck. I sprung out of bed. I had tons of energy. I'd worked through my day. I did feel great. I looked like I was dying, like literally pale, thin, fucking eyes sunken in the whole thing. It's hard to like convert people to your lifestyle when you look like a, a corpse walking around. You know what I mean? And then I decided to start eating meat again, like in 2020, I think went like hardcore, like the opposite direction, not like carnivore, but definitely trying to eat all whole foods, more of like a paleo aspect, I guess. But I enjoyed the, uh, I don't know. I've been uh, since once I started eating again, like I just crave fucking beef like constantly. I can't eat fucking raw meat, though. I love steak because it's easy to make yeah. and steak? it tastes delicious. Like, boom, 15 minutes on a cast iron, three ingredients, salt, Curl pepper and a steak. <laughs> no, it's just a simple thing. <laughs> it's just it. a simple thing to eat. Right. Versus like, I don't know. I do get you, though. 
I also I, I come re- home from work. I'm tired. Yeah. I stop by the store. Last I get a little ribeye. Yeah. I throw it on the grill and I'm eating. Hundred percent. And it's very filling too. Last night we made for dinner. We've been doing this a lot. There's these guys on Instagram that make these like meat boards and shit, where they have eggs and this and that. But it's a very protein conscious thing. And last night uh, for me and the fam, I did I did a couple of steaks. Uh, you know, sliced up thin, some hard boiled eggs, some apple slice, some cheese, and a fucking avocado just chilling there. And Breakfast like, or dinner? That was for dinner, yeah. Bam, hard boiled eggs at dinner. I would be farting it up. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. But they, they. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I like hard, it doesn't matter what time of the day. I can I'll eat, eat hard boiled yeah. eggs any time of the yeah, day. Yeah, same. I okay. tried your little roll technique too, but yeah. The ice, water, the ice water didn't help. I'm a, I'm a, How I'm long did make you boil it for? I brought it to boil, and then I waited about six minutes. They were perfect on the inside. Yeah. And then straight into the ice water. And still, and then you click it, hit it a little. Yeah. But it's like a... You, you, gotta, know, have a, I, a, you gotta have a slider in the thumb. Yeah, it has yeah, to be yeah, kind right. of a slide. It's a technique. Yeah. It's like yeah, when I, mean, I eat sunflower seeds, and like some American kid is eating sunflower seeds next to me, like he's doing one seed a minute. I'm like... <laughs> I can quickly... I'm like a bird. Yeah. I can eat a bag of sunflower seeds in 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, same. When I, to kill a craving, I'll just eat sunflower seeds. They they say back in the day in Russia, when people used to quit smoking cigarettes, they're like, yo, just get sunflower seeds when you crave a cigarette. Yeah, just salt. kill the craving, yeah. That's what the uh, pretzels and all this shit at a bar is for, too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys what? eat, what's the salty fish, the fried fish that you guys eat? Taranka. Vobla? Beer, right? Taranka. Vobla and taranka, yeah. 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 I eat that. I go buy that at the Russian grocery yeah. store here. This girl can't stand his mouth. When you're drinking smell. Beer. What, selotka? Selotka? Yeah, my girlfriend's like, yo, you have to eat that, like, in another room. I eat that fucking fish. Pickled with, fish. I put on my my fucking yeah, for, surgical for, gloves. For, for, for Americans, it's a very, like, uh, a very different vibe right a yeah, lot of because pickled, they don't a lot of like, pickled fried like salty things that just an american well, to preserve it really so work. you could afford to so eat food right no, it's I like in america it, yeah. you guys had mcdonald's so you're like oh if we're broke we can go eat a burger for 50 yeah. cents back in the day in russia you're like well, okay we got to find a way, a way to make this shit last right there's peasant food if it got any worse like russians would be pickling roaches and shit i mean i'm irish we ate peasant food too you know yeah. it's just what it you was. have to remain having a taste for peasant food just in case. Yeah, you can never get yourself too excited. I like it all. I, I could eat any of it. So, yeah. I can eat Wagyu one night and bologna another. I went to this restaurant called Matu on on Beverly uh, in Beverly Hills. It, they have that f- famous Philly cheesesteak. The, oh, I haven't had the, it. like Wagyu Philly cheesesteak. It's oh, insanely good. It. Very good. I love cheesesteaks too. Went to eat to the actual restaurant. Disgusting. Couldn't really? do it. Yeah. they The way they cook the... Uh, steak and not only that but they don't take your preference i'm like yo can you just cook this more more like well done for me because i just and they're like no sorry like pretty much they I mean, can't a well done steak you're pretty insane. no but compared to what they were doing i want medium usually yeah but these guys i'm it talking was, about when i'm cutting the steak it was just seared you you could still when you pull the meat apart yeah. you still see the strings of the meat coming coming apart and i'm just like whoa i'm like this is raw bro I'm like, this like, is not even cooked. We're going to sear it and just put it on your plate. And he's like, all right, I'll give you a hot plate. You could just sear it on a hot plate. And I'm like, you can you get the cheesesteak anytime? Cheesesteak is only, I think, midweek and only at the bar or to go. That's yeah, cool. but that's how a restaurant survives, right? One item that somebody craves, right? You'll always go get the cheesesteak. You only. just won't eat there. Yeah. Right. But that's like, you need, my favorite restaurants are something I crave. 40 bucks? Cheesesteak is... Uh, 20 bucks is it yeah why go that's not bad yeah it's really the bread for some of the freshest bread i've ever had in my really? life the, yeah. the cheesesteak is literally one of the best cheesesteaks i've ever had you're making me want to go grab one after i'm here. telling you it's very good <laughs> it's like insanely good and i think they start only the cheesesteaks after three o'clock mm-hmm. all the way to nighttime i'm not sure what the timing is but yeah. it's like a certain time and you go to the bar or you take it to go insane if you were to do something business wise or career wise and you were to go back 30 years from now or 25 years from now, would you choose anything different than you've done so far? Like for passion? Anything. Or for money? You know, for money. I think (laughs) think the problem is in this world, it needs to be. Hindsight. I think for for both. Um, I like fashion a lot. So I I probably would have focused more on that realm of things and even maybe like cut and sew and like the idea of being an actual designer is like dope to me. I really enjoy that. Um, uh, Maybe I would have went to film school and pursued the back end of that business more. That's what I always told myself I was going to do. I love cannabis. Um, I'm happy with the direction that I've taken. But the beauty of now is that I'm at a place where I have a little bit of a platform in my space and I can do all of those things from where I'm sitting, right? Right. Like I have the new retail store opening and through that, 
that's when I pick up on things like this because these are all opportunities to, like, to do, right? Um, this hat is actually a patch I had somebody draw and make and shit. And obviously it's like, that's from my brand, but it's also like, like super like Harley Davidson vintage inspired type yeah. shit. So I love those like other waves of things, right? Like, oh, I can throw the glasses on the Eagle. I can throw this on this and make it mine. Yeah. I love creating in that, in that regard as it's well. It's fun. Well, and it also sends a certain life. vibe, right? Like yeah. if you're using iconography that's recognizable and what it used to stand for, you're kind of picking backing on it, right? That, and it's a you part of speak. my life too. You know what I mean? Like I come from biker stock and I'm from the San Fernando Valley in a time period when this is like all of these elements, you know? So it's cool when it's true to yourself and it fits. Have you, have you seen the movie Alpha Dog? Yeah. Who was the weed dealer in that movie? I forgot his name. Uh, Jesse James. Jesse James. Yeah. You're, you've been in the weed game for 20 years, right? And yeah. in LA. I mean, that was before the weed game was the weed game, but he was just a kid that somebody was dumping too many packs on him. Mm. He's from the Valley though. I know, I know those kids. I know. Like, That's what I was saying. Cause you've been around for a long time. The movie is romanticized. It is right. It's not as he accurate. He did end up like fucking fleeing and living in fucking Brazil or wherever he was for a long time, being an English teacher, starting a family and shit. So really the kid like really went out there and did that, but that was stupidity, bro. That was a kid that had access to too much work before he should have. When the numbers were, you know, that's shit. That Canadian shit was going for like 3000 a pound then. It was like, there was a big amount of money for these little punk kids in high school to be dealing with. And then impulsive decisions. The led stupidity, to, bro. Yeah. The whole fucking thing was like amateur hour. Go fucking kidnap his brother and we don't know what to do with them. Then we're going to do this. It's sad, bro. Very and sad. And they made it look cool on the film because it was done well. The but ending of the movie In reality was so like, much. you know, oddly enough, uh, I had one of the kids' parents come into my, my uh, store I was managing at the time and help them out, like getting them some cannabis years ago and talk to them a little bit about that whole... Situation? Yeah, it came about just like naturally in conversation, but uh, they actually came in and were telling me about their older son who kind of got his little brother killed, basically, and the whole situation. And I, like, you know, ben, ben is like my homeboy too. We used to be like super tight. What's Why am I fucking blanking on Ben's name? Um, ben Foster, yeah. Yeah, we used to fucking, we used to just hang out and take his dad's BMW out and shit when he lived at Oakwoods. He was a, like actor kid and he's a fucking brilliant actor too. He's good in everything. Uh, one of my old friends, he's, he's a cool ass cat. Yeah, Ben Foster. He's fucking great and everything. Oh yeah. He started on a this Disney dude is show. no joke. Yeah, he's, yeah, a, bro, he's, he's a big legit. actor. Me and him used to run around together. We were like, we were pretty close and shit. We have some cool, cool stories together. Yeah, he ended up playing that role. So they made it look more... Uh, Dramatic then. They made it a movie. Yeah, Marketing. I mean, they exaggerate it, right? In, so. reality, Catch me can is fake. in reality, it was a sad situation from some Very dummy sad. kids that did something they shouldn't have done, and then it affected a whole bunch of lives over nothing. And you know, it's a bad look for cannabis, too, because that's not our vibe. You know what's sad about that? The kid that dies in the role of the kid that dies in real life, that actor, he actually passed away. I think in a in a car accident or something like that, and he Who was, was the, and he was a Russian kid too in L.A. And is then, it the kid I think you're talking about? Did he get ran over by his own car checking his mail? Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, right? I think the car Fuck, what that a was tragic. Fucking awful way to no, die. He had a jeep, bro, and he was on a hill. Yeah, and it slid down. And the fucking jeep, the emergency brake or whatever happened. He's checking his mail and he gets crushed by his own fucking car, bro. Insane. He's about Insane. to do like superhero literally, movies. The career literally. was about to be like well, correct. the biggest kid in the game. Oh and he God. fucking goes out checking his mail. Bro. Life is a fucking trip. Disgusting. Bro. That's actually how I would prefer to die than slow death. I get it. Just get hit by my Jeep. Bye. I don't think it was. I don't think it was quick. I think he was like. Yeah. I just, just roll yourself over, like Austin you know? Powers just rolls over him like. Yeah, I think he was like stuck under it. Yeah, yeah, Anton, yeah, yeah. Yelchin, yeah. Yeah, that's a fucking shame, bro. Well, gonna, that kid died? Yeah. yeah the bro. Russian kid yeah. from, uh, from Star Trek. Hello, my yeah. name, yeah. name is, whatever his name is. I like that gonna kid. Be huge. He was a great kid. He was no, a, he's going to be huge, bro. He's going to be huge. Damn. Yeah. And he, yo, he had that alpha dog fucking... Uh, and you, you know the saddest part when J Justin Timberlake is playing the role and he just keeps trying to decide if he's going to kill him or not. And they were like homing it out in the movie. I'm like, bro, I'm like, I know he's going to end up killing him, but in, I'm watching it and I'm just like, bro, why would you kill him? Yeah. <laughs> like, why would you kill him? I just don't get it. And it's just a stupid, and you would think like these because kids are young. Because when you're a like, child, bro, this goes back to the power thing. Homie had some power. Right. And in those, especially as a child, as a mind is just developing. And that ego. Everything is, remember how it was when you got your heart broke or mm, somebody yeah. dished you or something happened when you were a child you think or it's in, forever. in middle school? Yeah. 
This is the worst fucking thing in the world that could ever happen. It was life right. or death, bro. You know what I'm saying? And these kids literally, they can't conceptualize that. What do they say about that? When you, when you take a life or when a life is taken, they say it's a, it's a, or when somebody commits suicide, they have a saying and it's a, it's the absolute decision to a temporary problem, right? Yeah. Everything fades, bro. It's like, it's like this, it goes away. This, 10 years from now, you're going to look yeah. back on it and be like, that was fucking nothing. Bro. That's why when we have arguments you know? with like, let's say your girl and I go, is this going to matter in a week? It depends. It depends on how depends big what it, is. it is. Right. It'll pass though. I'm hundred percent pro suicide, but that's, you know, it's your choice. No, I'm, I'm pro choice. I'm pro Fight. choice in the sense that yes, if somebody gets to a point where they should feel like they don't have it anymore and they do it in a way that just doesn't, doesn't yeah. affect all of the people around them. Then yes, but I mean it's gonna affect all the people around you. Every decision nah, you look, my mom's my mom's husband shot himself in front of her and her kids. That's some spiteful shit. Okay, sure. I just meant There's like a lot if, of you, if you're a chick who's yeah. this you're motherfucker's being raped gone. every day for your like and now entire the, childhood, you kill yourself. I'm like, I get that. No, I understand. Yes, yes. But, but don't it's make a spectacle out of it. Right, like the way he's talking about it, exactly. If you're on your deathbed or you're an older cat and you're just done and you don't really have it to get up anymore any, every day and somebody's going to put you down, then I understand you wanting to make that decision and you having the freedom of choice to say, yo, when I'm done, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Don't affect all of the lives around you while you're doing but it. But that's aggressive in front of the kids. It's wild. Yeah. That's you know wild. what I mean? <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. What's the spectacle for? Like you said. Yeah. As a kid, you're like, okay, look, this is a dose of reality. A child should never get that. Never. Like I never knew death existed really until like my teenage years, right? Where you start understanding like, oh, not everything's happening. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a little girl that's nine years old right now that on April 8th, the other day, I don't know if you've seen this story, but her mom killed her man and her baby sister because left the them fucking... on the fucking freeway for whatever reason. We don't Wasn't know. Wasn't the eclipse? Allegedly, but yeah. like, who knows? But, but, uh, and left her on the side of the freeway and she's still here, bro. And she has to, to wrap her brain around the little that. girl. Yeah, the nine year old's alive. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. It's, it's hard it's on an individual. It's, it's, it's nasty on an individual basis, but on a mass scale, it's mm -hmm. funny how we don't care, right? We care about individual stories, but we don't really give a shit when a right mass about. scale right. of oppression and sadness that happens to people. We It's hard to. You know what I mean? Like kids born in Ukraine and kids born on the, in Gaza have way worse than that girl. Right. But we don't really pay attention to that as much as we do. Like, oh, my God, this poor girl. I mean, there's warlords in Africa that have slaughtered like fucking tens and twenties. Look at the guy in Haiti. Right. The guy in Haiti barbecue. Did you see the fucking. Yeah, but barbecue. Did you right. see the rap? Did you see the rap video from his opposition that came out? No. no. Bro, see if you can look that up. First I've of all. I've seen that actually. Right. First of all, the dude can rap a little bit, too. But it's great. <laughs> obviously, like, but they're doing music videos. These dudes are with the shit, bro. Don't fuck with Haitians. I'll tell you that much. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, I had a Haitian we've seen roommate. a little bit in Bad Boys, like Bad Boys 2 or whatever. Well, because it was, Miami, like, you know the neighborhood in, in uh, a Little Haiti. Yeah, you see that. But bro, like, there. I mean, I guess that's what rappers are emulating. You know what I'm saying? But these dudes are really with the shit. This yeah. shit is like some some wild shit. These guys are killing people for fun. You know, I mean, they're 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 at war. Obviously, it's like some city of God vibes. So turf war rapper turned Haiti warlord. <laughs> This is the opposition of barbecue. This might not be the one. This is like him trying to be like with the girls. The one I saw was like very war driven. This looks like Summer Friday. Like, I was just about to say it, it looks, looks like, like Karate's at this house. This looks like Kirill Summer Friday, bro. Is this, this girl's French? Sitting in the same spot. Is this ha French, Haitian, or is this English? This is in Haiti. So it's like French, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 Haitian. Yeah, it's uh yeah, like French Creole. French, French, yeah. yeah. I hear this. I'm like, I ain't scared of this guy. <laughs> Bro, the next video though, these fools all have like fucking thigh strap straps. Yeah, of course. And machine guns. Oh, and the they're like, also crazy. Yeah, these dudes, like, like I was that dude's not a fucking joke either. Like, this dude is like a, a, a mass murderer, probably. You know what I mean? But like... Uh, he said that he thought that was Drewski. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> well, <laughs> it's, but, uh... uh, uh can, yeah. <laughs> that did... <laughs> that does look like Drewski, my brother. And that guy, yeah. I guess he wouldn't be worried about Birdman if he was homeboy, though, right? I mean, bro, that story is probably fabricated, too, honestly. It's good. It's, yeah, I mean... I don't know. Birdman stands on business, bro. I don't know. He's Birdman's emotional, but who knows how much of it is fucking games and not games. 
they have a very uh i know birdman's about it i know that these guys are crazy i don't even know anything in, about birdman uh, in uh new orleans you know he's a sicko he's he also he's been piping more people than diddy has ever probably let's just put it that way <laughs> from the stories that we heard there's i have been, no idea yeah but uh, there's been some crazy stories with birdman you know what i mean like young thug birdman all these southern guys they're all wild oh uh, i mean they're wild before they're famous a lot of throw some money on them a lot of those underworld characters are pretty wild when it comes to like when you start to go back through history and see you find that like a lot of like psych psychopathic tendencies that get like really weird really quick as these guys get powerful and shit where so, you're like oh this dude was into some like i wish john wick was just CEO energy out there wild yeah wild. It's ceo energy right yeah yeah it's i wish the john wick shit. hotel was a real thing by the way Huh? Really? I wish John Wick was a hotel was a real thing. Like you know, when you have that underground hotel where you pay the coin and I you mean, have to go through the back, and we don't we don't know that it's not. I wish it, I, sure I like it's, on, to, it's probably on Epstein's island. They say art Im, art, art Im, imitates life, right? Or life right. imitates art. So anything you, you can think of is probably happening. Probably has some like real elements to it. You know what I'm saying? I kind of like. If it's that. not now, then somewhere at some point in time. I mean, I'm sure if you go into fucking like Bratislava or like one of these places in war torn Serbian fucking warlords, oh yeah, shit is like. There's some shit going on for that sure, this is like some sure. real deal shit, you know? The Albanians definitely have a hotel like that somewhere. <laughs> Can I ask this you? guys are next level. What would be something that you know is 80%, like 80% chance is not real, but you romanticize it wishing that it was? What I wish was real. Like Harry, I watch Harry Potter. I'm like, bro. I okay, that, I get what you're saying. I wish right, so that you're was saying like, real. okay, anything that's been created, I wish actually existed. existed yeah. Star um, Wars is dope. I always wanted to be a Jedi. Star Wars, never got into that shit. It's same. before my time. It's like the same shit with like, you know, how I fucked up your movie is like, I just, I didn't grow up with a dad. I, I grew up with a dad, but my dad, when they came to America, I have, I have very little culture, American culture. Yeah. I don't know sports. I, I really didn't know music because it's usually passed down to you by your parents. Mm -hmm. Right. So like I grew up on Russian music and like skiing. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like I never was the kid that fit in with sports kids. I didn't know stats. I didn't understand any of it. Same. I didn't know movies. All the movies we watched were Russian movies. You know what I mean? In the house. So um, I don't know. I think I romanticized. Um, Plays the glory. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's it's I think you just I think growing up I rom this is like such a Russian thing we what all about romanticized like Donald Trump like the fucking Donald, Russian, what'd you say? The we Russian all romanticized Sopranos. Donald Trump Russians did the first stop in America was fucking Trump Tower because really? it had gold it had caviar in the yeah. display and everything was gold and you just look at that and you're like this is the American dream like Home Alone vibes that brand he appealed to right you appeal so it's like yeah it's just you know you. you it would be nice it's if the American the dream was real. Yeah. It doesn't really appeal to Americans, though, but it's funny that you say that because I never thought about it like that. Like, yeah, it was. It appealed to, like, 80s Americans, the Trump brand, but you're right. It does work in the Russian It's culture. a promised land. It's I a, thought when we landed in America, in JFK, when my dad called us in, I kept watching Home Alone on repeat in ukraine prepping yeah. and i'm thinking that i'm gonna walk into a house like this everyone's gonna have crazy dinners <laughs> we're gonna be going on vacation with 30 40 people Bro, those like, people live in chicago in a mansion right i thought that yeah, that's what's gonna that be thing, like what does that dude do yeah they you flew first, first class. class to france and right? then i show up to brighton beach yeah and you're and, like what the and there's garbage and there's all? garbage everywhere <laughs> and I, I know the same russians from russia and i walk into my yeah. dad's uh, apartment it smells like uh pickled fish yeah. and it's hoarded up with yeah. fucking books and random antiques and bullshit and i'm just like yeah. what the fuck am i doing here what is that pesci that pesci fucking meme what the fuck <laughs> is this piece of shit this is what it you is you guys ever <laughs> saw the new meme when he goes brother ew brother <laughs> that one yeah brother, ew, what is that <laughs> it's one of my favorite so memes good. that just came out recently yeah <laughs> uh, I love that. Yeah, I mean, there's a guy running around New York City right now punching girls in the face. You guys heard about that? It's. I think it's like multiple people too. Yeah, and their girls like are like coming on TikTok. On. Like, I just got hit in the face. He's just, just. I think like He's helping like, them make content. There's randoms that are just running around punching chicks in the face. Yeah, you guys beats, remember beats the knockout game you, in New York? It was like a thing that guys yeah, were playing the knockout that. game yeah, like to see if you can crack somebody out. one time and knock them out. Yeah, I don't understand the appeal of that. It's called being... Bury you under the jail, is what I say. Exactly. Yeah, it's fucked up, bro. Instantly, as soon as you do that, you got to get killed on you the spot. You have worth. You have yeah. zero worth. Zero. And I don't care how troubled you I mean, are or whatever. Well, are you 13 or are you fucking 25? Don't there give is a, a shit. Definite, I mean, like, dude, 
I'll as be a honest 12, with you, 11 year old, if you're 11 and 10, probably wasn't yes, that bright, I agree. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Right, but you get a seven year old guy who falls and cracks his head. It's like, bro, if one person needs to die, it's the kid. But if it's yo, but if you're 17 years old and you're cracking older people in the face, you know better at that. Oh, you know better. Yeah. If you're 10 and 11, I agree with you. I never cracked a stranger in the face. That never. Sorry, but I've done something crazier though. We didn't do that, but we did start fights and do dumb shit. Yeah. And with what other 13 year olds. No, with the no. belts, with whoever. We I did were, some crazy shit wild, when I was you know 13. I mean? You know what I did one time, which was literally could have changed my life in a split second? We had a bow and arrow in this backyard. And the way the blocks are set up in Brooklyn, they're, they're like parallel to each other. Mm -hmm. So we took the bow and arrow and a real arrow. And we said, yo, who could shoot it over the block? And but it's going to land somewhere. You don't think about Bro, this shit. We didn't think about where it's going to land. Yeah. Yo, we heard someone yell. Because I guess it, pa it like almost hit them. Yeah. We walk around the side of the block, the arrow stuck inside of a fucking van. Can you imagine a person was standing there and we wouldn't hit that person? Did you person ever see sleepers? Head? You would be there. I mean, you would be going to jail for it. Did, did you see sleepers? Yeah, I saw them. Yeah. That's a fucking crazy cast. Yeah. And it's a bunch of kids who literally push like a hot dog cart down the stairs of a subway and, kill and they kill someone. Yeah. And De Niro is the pastor or the lawyer. I forget who he is. The now, huge yeah. cast. Like massive yeah, yeah, A-listers yeah. play all the kids, all these kids that in, did yeah. this. Yeah. That's such, yo, I think about that sometimes. I'm like, yo, what a dumb fucking Like, you idiot. could be like, yo, my life would change. How, yeah. the, how dumb still, were we to do this? Would you bro? feel yeah. bad about the, okay, so here's the psycho part. Say you shot that arrow and it hit someone. Instinct number one, oh my God, I'm going to jail, or oh my God, I killed someone. I go, oh my God, I'm going to jail. 100%. Because too many As people child, die on this planet, I don't give a fuck. Well, I would, didn't about. even think in those kind of layers but at that time. But while you sit in jail, you will be thinking about, oh my God, I killed someone and this is why I'm here. Yeah. 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 Then it, then it hits you. Or you, you think you could take a life or you won't. Um, I mean, it's it, the older I get, the more I'm like in the social dynamic of what, you know what I mean? Know. Yeah. Do you think you could, if somebody like, hurt my mom in front of me for no reason, I will take their life. So for a reason though, you won't, if they hurt her for a reason. No, I'm saying, well, my mom wouldn't give much of a reason to get hurt. You know what I mean? Unless she fucking did something disgustingly nasty. Just yelled the N word in public. Thought, no, but if she, that's not a good enough reason for me. If she was, if she murdered somebody or stole millions of dollars on the low and I never knew about it and she was running some kind of scams and something happened, I would have to, I would be still upset that somebody killed my mom, but I would have to be like, yo, it's crazy that she was doing yeah. this. You know so what I mean? Don't and hate the got, player, hate the she, game. And she got clapped. But if somebody came through and, and cracked my mom for no reason, they're gonna have to probably suffer, bro. I'm right. willing to protect the flock. Yeah, for, exactly. For, for any, anything, any regard at of any like cost, the human dynamic of what that means. You yep. know what I mean? Right. So you kill the guy that punched your mom, and you're in jail now. Cool. We're out of here. See you later. Now Not punch. I can't protect the but flock. But I'm saying, God forbid, it's even worse, right? It's just like it depends on severity, situation, depends on how. It's a circumstantial thing, right? I mean, if somebody, if it's, it I don't think I could put my hands on you to kill you, but I could push a button. And make it happen yeah. all day. <laughs> I, that button would get worn out so fast. I can make my peace with a lot of things. Same. Yeah, I would get rid of all the traffic in LA in 30 minutes here. You're Dr. Just evil. <laughs> you're like, you sit in your lair and you're like, bop, 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 bop. dude, we're all <laughs> evil. We just don't have the power to, you know, act on it sometimes. Yeah. Right? Like at the end of the day. We have the thoughts. Do, do I definitely don't sit around. I definitely don't go sitting like uh, if somebody cut me off or something. You have to do no. something so disgusting for me to fucking I, think of I, that. I am a person of value at this point so, in my life so that regardless of what it affects my life, it affects like a ton of people around me and the decisions that I correct. make on a day-to-day -day basis. So it has to be done. Which Kirill relates to. He runs a about, company, right? In, right. A, in, a, in a way, you know what I mean? Like I have the downline of partners and things and life and five for sure. and so much you have people to around me and accountability. People hoping that. So it's like, yeah, it's it's uh, too much to lose. Yeah, because I'm valuable enough that this is affects a downline of people that is like tremendous. Right. Right. Their life will greatly go backwards. Not that they won't still succeed or get over it because, you know, nobody's bigger than right, but the that's program, a, that puts but a dent in the progress. You know what I mean? No it, matter what. It would be extremely unfortunate for me to do that and throw it all away for nothing. Correct. You know what I mean? So things exactly. have to be thought about in a way. Well, yeah, like I'm not that. saying I'm going to kill the guy that cuts me off in real life. Yeah. But if I had a fucking button in my car. And it was like a Call of Duty thing. Like that guy doesn't need to exist. What the fuck? <sighs> right. I mean, maybe he doesn't. Most people don't really need to exist. Or maybe they don't exist. Maybe they don't. You know what I mean? Who? Do, what do we know? <laughs> it's like, you know, fucking are we here? Are we not?
That is an interesting one. You know? Are we here? I don't know, guys. <laughs> you guys are taking me through a lot of layers of things. Yeah, that's the kind of <laughs> shit questions that make me lazy. Yeah. Because that kind of question makes me go, what's the point? What the fuck is the point of all of this, all that, all that stress, all this bullshit where you're like, you know what? If I could just be of the earth and live like. Highly intelligent in people are usually less productive and successful. There's like a level of, of thing where like when somebody is super intelligent, they usually are so like in their own head about shit breaking shit down in layers that it actually creates a barrier for them to be successful right? to pull the trigger because they're questioning their own ability because they have the ability to question it. And then you get some dude that just comes in here and fucking swings for the fences and totally believes in himself. Ignorance and, is bliss. And it works, right? Ignorance is bliss. Definitely. Right. That's, that's it's it. That's People who are willing right. to take those fucking chances. It took me, it took me 30 years to learn how to cure my no, like, you know, when you just like space out and you're just not productive, what is it called? Um, like ADHD. writer block or whatever. A, Creative block. Yeah. A, yeah. And I learned that I just have to do tasks in time slots. Like I have to literally like Denzel and fucking, uh, what is that shit called? Yeah. <laughs> set you, a timer. Yeah. When you set like a timer and you're like, all right, if I don't do it in this time, like it's not going to get done. Yeah. You know? And I just had to learn that because even when I was running the marathon, you time everything. So I was like, oh my God. Now that I know the time, it's giving me anxiety, but it's pushing me to make sure I finish whatever I have to finish yeah, it's within goal that time. And driven. Right. And unfortunately, when I don't give myself those time slots, nothing gets done. Right. So I'm like, oh my God, I got to, let me just give myself 30 minutes to finish this task and then I'll time myself and I'll get it done. It's high productive. productive. Yeah. Benjamin Franklin, I don't know if you've ever seen his journal, but his like daily, his like daily list of things that he did. But uh, this dude's life was scheduled down to like 15 minute increments. I mean, cocaine helps. Yeah. Elon Musk does the same thing. Well, like, Academy nowadays. Literally, yeah, back then, the there was like, fucking snuff box. Uh, 10 minutes to put things in his places. Uh, 10 minutes to write for the Philadelphia Inquirer. 10 minutes to do this. Like, this motherfucker's shit was slotted on a schedule, but obviously it was a super productive, high functioning. But you know why? Being. Because but you get to a certain point. Yeah, and not only that, but you get to a certain point and you're like, oh my God, I'm 30. Oh my God, 30 more years. Oh my God, my prime is only 10 more. Oh my yeah. God, we don't got much time. Yeah, oh you my God. about that when you're 12. <laughs> yeah, and then all of a sudden, days pass by and you're like, oh my God, every day, every yeah. day, every day. And then so it goes back to the qu like I had a question. Do you have trouble pulling triggers? I struggle with that. I'm every very day. indecisive. I yeah. struggle with, I'm not even indecisive. I just. What do you mean by pulling triggers? What so does that pulling mean? a trigger on an idea, on a concept. Like when I went to art school, they told us the first thing you should always do when you start a painting is to paint the canvas gray because it's already tarnished. Because a lot of people struggle with a white yeah, canvas yeah, and not yeah. knowing what the first move should be. 100%. So they're like, ruin it. And now you can only make it better. Yeah. Right. So it's like you're told to paint the canvas just I like a shitty color. I definitely move uh, slower than I probably should and at my own pace. Yeah. But I do everything based off of feel and like, so. Do you think that's good or bad? I mean. Are you happy with your life? Of course, yeah. Then that's a good thing. Then that's, yeah, yeah like you said, I but guess. What's right that, or wrong, right? But like, I feel that the things that do come to fruition for me are meant to be. You know what I'm saying? Same. And it's not like I'm just taking shots in the right. back anymore. But it's also like, uh, in regard to the Franklin thing, Bezos is totally like different at this point in his career. Like he focuses on like three really high quality decisions a day, basically. You know what I'm saying? And like, or a meeting. And then like, so he's trying to limit and put all types of systems and people in place so that the only thing he's focused on is making like a couple of really, really high high-end decisions well yeah because he's got and the infrastructure that, ben franklin was doing that. the solo right solo again. right like imagine jeff bezos was in charge of shipping your packages you know grabbing it from the shelf like he, yeah. he has an infrastructure that allows him to make three big decisions and then go bang his fucking ugly wife. but elon is probably making all of the decisions yeah which explains why you know amazon is significantly uh more stable as a company than anything elon touches it's a little yeah. too much touch, a little too much, you know, like Jeff Bezos lets, he doesn't really inject himself too much into society totally different and lets him actually. run, lets Amazon kind of exist without any real politics. Right. I can fuck with both, but yeah, yeah, right. exactly. I agree with what you're I saying. Fuck with but both. I fuck with, I, I, I fuck you know with what Elon I like about though. Elon is I like Elon when he's trying to do things others aren't because then it's easier for him to be recognized for advancements. Right. And when he starts dicking around with Twitter and at this point, you know, the EV market, is already so established, right? It's like you can now start comparing him 
to other people, but it's hard to compare Elon when he's reaching for Mars, right? You're like, that's a visionary. I fuck with that side. But like, you know, Tesla at this but point is like, kind of, well, it's a bigger play than people. People don't see that it's WeChat. So he's playing on a, on a, I also, on a, you, on people are so funny when they talk about this. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, I just it's, think it's funny when people yeah. knock him for the Twitter thing, because I'm like, well, they okay, I'm the, like, I get it. Like you're looking at the numbers. It's like, right. It's cool. Good for you. But you guys don't want to see the other side of it. Where What's he the other doesn't side? give a fuck yeah, but <laughs> what, you, but, what people think. And not only that, but he has a base of people now. And two, it's a write-off for a loss for all his business. Yeah, but anyway. that's not, Val, that's the terrible way to do business. If you're like, hey, I bought this company and I'm going to like lose money and count it as a loss, that's still a loss then. No, no, to be no, a no, successful. I actually enjoy Twitter now more than I did before. Nah, I loved you Twitter 10 years ago. You guys right? Yeah, it's the fucking way they communicate in fucking China, right? No, that's the way they do everything in China. Nothing yeah. gets done without yeah. WeChat. Right, right, right. But he's they alienated. It's everything. such a user base that like Twitter is yeah. literally. But Curl, to be fair, you weren't using Twitter for two years prior to yeah, Elon acquiring it. Anyway. Well, I was just banned. But, right, but you I didn't. You weren't that, on the platform. It was fucking trash, bro. Like yeah. it was filled with bots. That, uh, it was fucking how is gross. it better now? I think that it's better now because it's more for it is like is like an actual monetary financial app that's going to change into some type of I will make a bet NFT with you guys crypto space that will I bet you any money an will effect. and it's going to yeah. stay in the game also nope. stock wise and it's going to stay in the game for crypto forever. You'll see. It's not. It's not. We're going anywhere. Uh, I disagree. You'll I see. disagree just from like an experience of watching when you alienate fan bases, you then become too small, right? That's why Amazon works. It doesn't really alienate. And Twitter should never alienate. If you're going to call it a town hall, then fucking let it rock. And Amazon's not and worldwide, he, though. I mean, Amazon Trump is. alienates a what? lot of people, but... Who? Trump does? Yeah. Yeah. Truth Social is... Proof of why it's garbage. No, but in general, it doesn't mean that his fan base doesn't grow. You know what I mean? On the other side of that, uh, on the other side of that hate is just like you said, you got to put a, sand, uh, you got a line a in the sand. Not, not, not in those situations. Base, you know? Um, do I think that it's fucked up that this dude can't live his life without the the stock being directly tied to it? Who? Elon? You know? Yeah, him fucking smoking, taking a hit of a blunt on Joe Rogan and then having to get piss tested for the next five years. And, and uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? He didn't really think that one through. But the fact that the stock loses billions and like... Yeah, we're you know, a conservative country. We're the, a cons but the market is manipulated. Is it? Did the stock lose... Do you think long-term investors took their money out of it? No, they no. shorted the stock because they thought that they would direct it would directly Nancy Pelosi fucking apparently is one of the best <laughs> stock the traders best of her all husband time. Not, not her her husband's the best yeah. stock trader so of all time. I don't even know what's going on but right right <laughs> I, I just don't like I, as a logic I don't know to me I'm turned off by st uh, Elon Musk's personality more and more because I'm like bro you're just kind of a clown to me because like a CEO energy should carry a little bit to me a little more. You're, you run a tech companies. You're not running assholes live forever, right? I mean, like you got to know your lane a little bit too. And I don't know. It's like, dude, I don't, the reason AT and T is big is because the CEO doesn't draw lines in the sand. He just goes, everyone can use my service. But he's still the goofy kid with no hair that bought a McLaren with all his money. You right. So he's saying? a clown. He's just a little he's bit the of a clown. Dude that swings for the fences and just follows these crazy ass dreams. Right. But he's able to build and redevelop industries because he takes those shots Listen, too. You know? Yeah. Right. And has help from, you know. I get all perspectives. The old I like him though. Fucking, you know, family mine. I like Elon. <laughs> I like that he's not an average like CEO and fucking, he's a nerd obviously, but you know. Whatever. I like him. I think he's dope. Yeah. I, I only like when he's doing things that other people aren't doing. It's when he's like, like, bro, you bought Twitter to play around in this fucking shitty sandbox. You're trying to get to Mars. You're trying to do Neuralink. Do that shit. Like, just do oh, that it's all, cool it's, shit. It's all on a go. I mean, that shit's go, you know? Yeah. Which is dope to me. Did you see the interview with Homeboy that was controlling the screen with his mind and shit? Right. But then once Pretty fucking, cool. you know, all the other companies catch up to Neuralink, they're going to end up clowning. That's fine. Elon. But I've the fact that he was the, the first person was sick. I've right? always I'm not liked Civilization. Have you ever played that game, Civilization? I literally just bought a PC laptop to play Civilization, Age of Empires, and Command and Conquer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm a, I'm so a, I literally have it in my house. Well, I played Age of Empires too. two nights ago. Um, I love it. It's like a role-playing like strategy game, whatever. It's really long form. So you know the guy that they give the implant to? His biggest thing that he was stoked on was being able to play Civilization again. Yeah. That's sick. That's it. He played chess like live. So I saw it. Could see it. Sick. Civilization though. He said, I played it. 
for like six hours the other night. And he was so excited that like he could actually get through that game. And I was like, I feel that dude. That's dope. You know what I mean? It is. Right. Dope. Yeah. Right. That is great. But just like yeah. everything good, it always gets corrupted too. Right. Neuralink is the example of civilization until they implant it into like our troops. And then we can control them without even, you know what I mean? I it mean, becomes Manchurian candidate. Let's, shit. let's be honest. If you think that that shit's not already in existence. Oh, right. of course. Oh yeah. Yeah. We but get, that goes for everything. We get to see, a hundred years ago technology now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, these that, guys have been with the shit for a long, long bro, time. Bro, anything in Everything this life is, is developed like a, for the industrial, correct. for the military complex. Right. Sure. Everything's going to get multiplied. Everything. Everything's going to get manipulated. You know I mean? It doesn't what matter we have what we do. It's just slowly dripped back out into public. Tools. Correct. Did you see the story about the Swedish girls? They got hit by the cars and never bled and nothing happened recently. And they were saying that they think that they're part of like a gene editing program or something. They got ran over on a fucking highway by like a truck and a fucking van, bro. And nothing. Two Swedish girls, right? Young girls. And they're like, I was reading an article about, they think it's like CRISPR, like fucking gene editing, like, like GMO type shit because these chicks, these chicks didn't bleed, bro. They didn't bleed. They didn't die. They had no significant markings from getting like on video trucked by a fucking. Never seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I've never heard of that. Yeah. So I was just reading it on Twitter a couple of days ago. It might be up there. We'll see. They probably took it down. Yeah, it was a. Yeah. Could same. be AI. Could be whatever. Nah, never, they, they no. just, yeah, who knows I mean, what the fuck's you know, going on? There's shit going on. Bro. I, I, I'm sure there is. Yeah. If we think that that uh, wars need to be fought with people anymore, I don't know what global grade. We're mistaken. <laughs> yeah, man, that that doesn't look like a trustworthy news source. What is a crazy true crime story have you heard that kind of bugs you out? A true crime story? I mean, uh, fucking... Anything you've ever heard and you're like, oh my God, is that real? Like you have to double check like the have info. You seen, did you guys watch the octopus murders on Netflix? Oh, why does that sound familiar? That shit's gnarly, bro. Watch that. It's like a yeah. four or five part docuseries. It's crazy. Yeah. Any serial killer it's about a kind journalist of shit. trying to break a story. Yeah. Like any kind of shit like that. Those are cool. Right. Where you're like, oh, wow. Like, you know, obviously we all love serial killers for that reason. Cause you're just like, dude, I can't believe. I heard of a crazy story like, you know, yesterday, which, which just fucking, I had to like one, I couldn't listen to. And two, I was just, I couldn't believe it. Uh, my girl told me the story and I had to fact check like 40 different sources, but she basically told me that there was a chick named Allison that got abducted by these two kids that were Satanist followers. And I don't know, in the in the sixties or forties, I forgot what it was. And these kids basically took her to some place and they were like, Yo, Satan is telling us to kill you. It was like a twenty six year old. He kinda orchestrated the whole thing. She's like, Please don't kill me. She's like twenty seven years old. They're like, Now fuck that. They stabbed her in the stomach like thirty seven times, in the throat like thirty four times. This girl wakes up and they're like next to her body and they're like, Yo, what do we do? Are we digging a hole? We're just keeping her in this field. And the guy's like, yo, fuck it. Let's just be out of here. Let's get out of it. Too much to work with. She they, lives. This girl lives, gets herself. She writes the names of the people that she heard in the sand with her blood, thinking she's going to die. She's like, yo, if I'm going to die, this at least like I'm, North Dakota somewhere or something. I want to I'm not like sure. Place. But yo, yeah. she writes their names and then still is like waiting to die. Doesn't die. She's like, okay, I'm just going to get up <laughs> at this point. This yeah. is getting, she gets up and realizes that her intestines are on the ground and she steps on them. She picks them up. She holds them. She somehow realizes that she needs to like walk. She's blanking out. She's walking. She's blanking out. She gets to the highway. Her head is hanging off her fucking mm -hmm. her neck because she slit. Her, they slit her throat so many times. Some kids stop. It was like twenty year old kids. They pull over. They take her into the car. They wait for the ambulance to get there. The girl survives, and they find the killers. That went wild if the other kids picked her up and killed her. Bro, imagine. <laughs> And the kid that uh, rescued her ended up being her doctor to give her labor for her kid. And she had two kids. Fuck. Duality. That's a wild story, Light bro. Light and darkness, bro. To wake, bro, she wakes up out of getting stabbed 60 times. She steps on her intestines. That's insane. Do you, do you ever have a book called the Darwin Awards? I used to have that growing up. Darwin Awards are basically people who like basically stupidest shit, that stupidest shit way to die. This is a couple I read growing up. This is absurd. A couple having sex in the woods. This girl gets struck by lightning. The condom they're using fuses the two of them together. He passes out from the lightning strike that goes through her. He wakes up. A bear was eating half of her body. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is it a real story? I mean, Darwin Awards. Who knows if they're real, but, you know, probably all fake. But, like, growing up, you were just like, damn, that's a crazy way to fucking imagine having a half your, half your girlfriend's last, body. The last thing you were doing was having sex with her, and then you just wake up, and the bear is eating it. 
Yeah. Did you know that uh, Jim Caviezel, when he played uh, when he played Jesus in The Passion of the Christ, you know, he got struck by lightning on set. Really? Yeah, he had he had like two open heart surgeries because of it. He, like uh, I was just reading about this the other day. Very interesting. That's weird. His his initials are JC, and he was thirty three when he shot the movie. It's a really weird like thing. It talks about like Mel telling him in the beginning, like, you know, this is probably like career suicide if you take this role, and like, you know, they're gonna be, you know, you have a good acting career going right now, and there's just gonna be a lot of like hate if you take right. on this this thing. He said, so I want you to go home and think about it, you know. And homeboy came back the next day, and he said, my initials are JC, and I'm thirty three. And he said, I'm, I'm going to do this film. He got struck by lightning. But it's a really crazy stories about like a couple of Muslim dudes on the set that were converting, that converted to Christianity during the filming. A lot of like uh, uh, really uh, strange uh, occurrences. Have you, let me ask you, since we're talking about yeah. outside before I lose a train of thought, mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the Alec Baldwin situation? About like how do you rust? How, the way they ruled out the whole the whole the whole thing like as far as like do you think it was his fault that the prop gun had it's only his fault because his name was a producer it was his film so it's gonna be his fault yeah if so, he was just he was an actor actually handling the gun which which uh, I mean uh, unfortunately Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee and all of these people like a lot of people have been lost their life on set due to somebody mishandling a prop. Uh, firearm, right? And, uh, you know, there's all the conspiracy theories around it. But in this case... I guess he's responsible because he was supposed to oversee everything, right? I mean, no, it's just his name the on the thing. producer's responsible because it's his film. Yeah, if I have, like, if, you know, Molly ends up committing murder, says it is. Yeah, they're going to judge me for it, too, because she works here. Yeah. Crazy. So, uh, yeah. but, yeah, it's a super unfortunate situation, but you know not to point a, uh, a firearm at people and fuck around with it because people end up getting shot regardless, you know? It just, it, it ends up happening like that. There's Crazy. a reason why you point it not at people. You know, the first thing in, 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 like, in like a hunting class or anything, the first thing they teach you is you never point a gun at anything you don't plan on killing. It's true. Right. But you're just an actress or an actor. Yeah. It's you're just, just like, oh, they're handing me this. Right. Thanks. I assume this is good to go. Boop, boop. We're filming the scene, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know. Yeah, and somebody lost their life. I shouldn't double check every chair I sit on set. He, he knows better, though, because he's been on set. He's a fucking old man. Yeah, but he's like, but happened. then to him, he's like, oh, do I got to make sure that like the fucking catering didn't give anyone food Correct, poisoning either? Exactly, like yeah. there's so Especially many moving parts. You're like, bro, like, come on. I'm also an yeah, actor. But if you're that. handling a weapon, you know that. But it was a pro you. apparently it was a prop gun. It was, it fake, was an right? old gun. It was an old And gun. she had live ammunition because she went shooting with the gun right the day before. Yes. Yeah, so to a gun range. Fault. It's like, bro, why would you not shoot a different it's gun? fucking. Yeah. She should go to jail. Use that terminology. Fucking. You can use fucking here. Yeah. It was the other one, but whatever. It's That's all right. right. <laughs> yeah. We we'll added those out. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry yeah. about it. No, I'm not worried about it. But uh, it's in two that, hours man. of conversation. Fuck it. I'm sure we said worse. Um, but yeah, you should know better. One, what the fuck are you using a fucking prop gun for to shoot at shit? You know what I'm saying? That's 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 weird. Nepotism, right? That's bad. You know that's why saying? she got the job. So it's like she didn't get the job because she was qualified. She got the job because I believe it's like her father brought her into the industry. First of all, they're supposed to be. There's supposed to be police presence on set and things are supposed to be double, triple, quadruple checked. So there was negligence on the production in general. In There's all types of other Correct. things that were going on with the I production. I agree. I mean, you walk and around America, that. go to any business, like people suck at their jobs, right? Whether you're a prop master here or some fucking guy who takes nine hours to slice deli meat at Ralph's here, right? It's just like people are essentially... Yeah, it's just yeah. a job. Like no one's like, oh, this What's is my this, passion bro? to we're, handle we're meat. Fucking yeah. Well, repetitive. Nobody, nobody takes pride in what they do anymore. Nope. The dude opening the door used to take pride in opening the door and representing it's true the company. Because it wasn't working. as much. Right, well, back in the day, you could afford to live off of that door job. Yeah. Now you're like, I, why would I take pride in something that I'm literally Miss still but, in the yeah. gutter? Because here's of. the thing, though. What if, what if us taking pride in the jobs that we do change the economy in a way that it's just that you to, could live off of? That but now. the problem is, taking pride in your work back then felt like it was like small businesses, right? Like, why the I don't take pride in working at McDonald's. Eat my ass. They treat me like shit. The CEO's overpaid, right? Like, no one, like, why should I care about a transitional job that McDonald's much? McDonald's isn't a food company. Why would they care? Yeah. They're a real estate company. Right, but my point is, it's like, why would anyone care? I've never, growing up, did you take pride in your fucking, why I worked at Walmart? Absolutely not. I am there to get money for, for my time and I my labor. I don't take any jobs. pride in working at Walmart. I mean, I think the CEO of Costco started in the stock room too. Some guys make it up. 
what, yeah. climb up? Yeah. Yeah, but with those few few situations out of like thousands of people that are constantly... But think moving. about the mindset. Yeah, of course. No, I agree. He the was attitude a changes everything, of course. He was a lifer and ended up running the company. Yeah, for the no, I agree with you. Right. But, could but, be Wendy's could be anything. Don't think that you can't start a McDonald's corporate and end up running the company. Yeah. Of course you can. Right. It's just whether you take the pride in that and that's what you want to put your... The guy from Chipotle... On. You know, he in Denver, he started the first Chipotle and he uh, I went by there recently when I was there, actually, by the new, first Chipotle. Yeah. My, my brother was telling me about it and shit. Yeah, it's cool because he started with like all integrity, like best, best quality food, mm -hmm. wanted to make it all Mexican, blah, 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 blah. It was blah. a great model. When I w yeah. first had Chipotle, like before they were out here in Texas, they had franchise there first and I was in Dallas. And the first time I had it, I said, oh, bro, this is going to hit L.A. and be like the fucking biggest thing ever. It's going to be crazy. So good. Yeah. I love Chipotle. Yeah. Not, it it kind of obviously off, changed, but changed. It's, it's, that's uh, what everything changes with, yeah. with capitalism. Well, in and out doesn't change. Well, in that's because they fire. Yeah, well, in and out doesn't change because they're more of a local brand, right? It's just like a, a, a essentially a micro. Like it's still it's able to model. be controlled, right? It's like their it's, model. No, it's a family business. It's not public, and their model is to do things a certain way. You know. Which is great because once the, they they don't let nobody, you know, they don't make in and out is really they don't, good. They make no money off of burgers or fries. They make all their money off drinks. That's their model. That's why it's so cost effective. That's why the meat is fresh. That's really, why they I didn't know that. The way they do, yeah, that's they, a fact. So if you go in and they fuck up your order, they lost money on you. Yeah. If they have to change a burger, yeah, because they make zero money off of burgers. They make all I mean, the money off drinks. I mean, it's cheap as fuck. Yeah. It really is a cheap. For good fresh, burger. for fresh, never frozen meat. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm you don't like, fan. you don't, don't like it enough. Like it's not my favorite either, but I'm a fan of the franchise because of the way they operate it. Yeah, pretty trippy. What else we got? Do you have anything coming up? Do you have anything? Um, Tell us about the weed brand. Yeah, real so quick. Um, Squints Cannabis obviously is a kind of a representation. I'm a cultivator. That's my background, um, and running like micro business. So basically, doing everything. But uh, uh. My brand is, is just a collection of my thoughts and things that I want to bring to market to smokers. Um, it's a flower brand. We do high-end flower, um, hopefully at a price point that is reasonable for to touch enough people to, to bring it to the masses. And then uh, I have a new retail store opening up with my partners, Foreign Genetics. Um, it's called Squints Foreign. It's just like a straight collab store. Literally has a split down the wall of like dual branding Two different stores, basically. Oh, um, cool. And I'm um, happy to get back and run a good retail experience in California and the San Fernando Valley here because I feel like it's been, you know, there's not a lot of like lifers in the game anymore that really care about this shit or really want to, you know, give a good retail experience. That's why I think the California rec market is shit. It's not that, yeah, it's overtaxed, but it also is undercared for. You know what I'm saying? So there is people that are doing it well. Right. Um, I mean, it's just very hard to run a luxury brand, right? It's like most people are like, I just want to pay my bills and make money. So they're always going to try to. That's why, you know, the, the LA shops are a dime a dozen here in that sense, right? There's a million brands out there that are at the bottom, but like there's only a few Louis Vuittons, right? Because it's such yeah. a hard, it's a much hard, you have to be able to weather a lot of shit being luxury, right? Because yeah. it's a different barrier of entry than being like, yo, I sell cheap weed. I mean, uh, right. So when you have good weed, it's just a luxury product and it makes way more money, but you really have to be passionate about it versus it makes, someone who has to make less money. Actually, <laughs> what I think it makes more money down the road in the beginning. It's yeah, probably if not you have brand equity. Yes, de yeah. definitely. Like long term, it can it can be. But right now, the business itself is probably at a break even or upside down state of affairs in California. You know what I mean? It's just what it is. Based off of if you recreation, if you business. do it legally, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean you have different overhead, but we're we're a small group. We're very hands on, and so we will be able to continue to grow. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, but yeah, long term, I want to be able to touch more lives. So I definitely don't want to be priced out of the general public because I would rather over deliver at a price point that works than under deliver at a price point that is. Profitable. Yeah, as long as you keep it like in and out. I think you will succeed. It's kind of like the same reason. Yeah, that was a great Scaling moment. like Chipotle where you're like, it starts losing a little bit. It's the yeah. same way with us, right? Like when Assholes of Forever started, it had a certain different air to it than now where it's just like, yeah, we're trying to get it everywhere as many people because like the business model is about like volume. literally volume to just brute forces down everybody's throat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
quality sometimes suffer. There's less control because you're scaling. There's more things to work on versus yeah. like four T-shirts and you're just hyped on selling those four things. It's a give or take for yeah. sure. But yeah, we're excited about it. I can still be happy that I get to get up every day and do what I do through the ups and downs of the industry. And uh, I still have the passion to want to put fire in bags and hand it to people. So are you still like putting in the hours? Like, are you going to do like you work on the weed brand? I do everything. That's cool. Yeah. There's no like it is a complete representation of me and my my work. There's yeah. Nothing Some people just sell their name or be like, yeah, I'll not, rap. I'll rep it. But no, I'm like, not, I don't want to fucking sit there and no, it's not trim weed or whatever. Yeah. I uh I mean, I don't trim weed. Anymore, right. But you but, know what I mean? It's just like, but yeah, <laughs> but no, I do cultivate. I do pick the strains. I do make the bags. All of the art is me. Nothing has been done by sides. It's, it's you literally a representation. Do you, do you have a, you draw, you doodle, you I don't, design, no, 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 you no. just know what looks good. I have designers, but like, cool. but everything direct is it. a completely directed by me. It is a total representation of my idea of what this is and what I want to bring to market. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, and it's been well received by the, not only the people but the industry itself, which is dope. You know. Well, yeah, you also have a little bit of a, you have a story, right? It's just cool. Yeah. I, I totally. Yeah, and I really like I really do that shit every day too. So then the the big guys can respect the fact that. Right, it's the people that fake the real. funk. They see through real fast, and it's like, yo, well, this guy's doing the work. The celebrity collab thing doesn't work in the weed world because it does doesn't. It doesn't do well. You know what I mean? It doesn't really work. Yeah, because you're either a weed guy that happens to shit. do music or something else, or you're you're not. You know what I mean? It's kind of that that realm where it's a very finicky like. Also, small batch weed market. is still a gray area, right? So that's why it's. Yeah, it's not federally legal. So let's be honest. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you scale right now. If they decide to turn it the other way, correct. It's a wrap. I mean, look, they just rolled back abortion yesterday. two the days MSOs, ago, right? So yeah, in this country, the MSOs could be like. Yeah, all of these guys that are like publicly traded in Canada and all types of places. If if they decide to change their stance, their shit is done. See they have billions and billions and billions Correct. of dollars wrapped up in something that is useless. Now. That's why. That's why the yeah. the interesting thing about weed is weed needs like a few really monster brands because, like, dude, like if we can roll back abortion, we can roll in a full. American smoking ban if we wanted to, right? But there's just still a little bit too much power in tobacco that leans on the government, right? And weed needs to have a little bit of that so that anytime anyone even brings up banning it one day, they're like, yo, 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 pump the brakes. We're not at a scale yet where we have lobby, like we have lobby. That's what I mean, power. but there's not even like a the industry Marlboro, isn't right? completely consolidated yet either. Of course. So we'll see what happens with the rescheduling and we'll go from there. Yeah. At the end All of the right. day, like I'm going to be, I would prefer to be a hand-to-hand -hand type of dude. So if it ends up with me, having a small retail where I deal with people directly every day and you come to me because you like what I do and yeah. you like the way I represent it, then I'm cool with that too. Fire. Yeah. Sick. Good stuff. Once I'm back to smoking, I'm going to smoke the weed you gave me. Of course. Keep um, it. It'll age a little bit better. It's really fresh. So let me ask real quick. I know we got to end, yeah. but like is weed better to be smoked fresh or can, how long can I keep weed in the pouch before I can smoke it where you're like, if it's stored properly in like room temperature and darkness, um, it, it can, months? Yeah, Two I mean, it's the, the color will age, but the terps will stay. What we're trying to do is preserve terp like flavor from off gassing off the plant, right? Which it does in the room the whole time it's growing, and it it, it kind of goes through that. So, so yeah, uh, it's gonna burn better two months from now than it is today. Oh wow, okay, because it's so fresh. Cool. I see weed at a at a pace that like. I never see it when it's prime either. Like I would have to put it away to like burp it and air it out properly to like get it to that that perfect smoking uh, Got it. Uh, texture, you know. Mm. But my my weed tends to age well, and so no matter when you open it, you'll you'll enjoy it. Uh -huh. Some good nose on the weed too. Yeah, and it, it'll burn good it's like good. for for a long period of time. So pumped! The first time I get high after st after not smoking, I'm literally probably gonna pass out. <laughs> yeah, you'd be high as shit. Hell yeah! It's for amazing. sure. Take a um, break, though. It's good for it. Will you plug your socials or whatever? Just at Squints. Just S-Q-U-I-N-T-S. At Squints. Um, the store will be coming up. It'll be at Squints Foreign. Um, that's it. Through my Instagram. Sick. Let um, us know when Twitter's, it opens. You know, at underscore Squints. Uh, you'll find me, though. If you just look on yeah. Instagram, everything can be Sick. directed through there. Dude, it was amazing Dude, to have you, you on. coming through. And look out for you guys on our show because you guys were just on me and Hell Brian's yeah. show yeah. as well. True, and I want to come when you open the store. Yeah, I'll, I'll invite you guys out and have you guys through. We'll yeah, do. A, we're gonna do a, a grand opening and shit. So maybe awesome. May Where's it gonna be, real quick? It's Mason and Roscoe, so it's on Roscoe Boulevard in the Valley. It's like 
perfect. Love Mid Valley. Yeah, Love yeah. the Valley. Yeah, it's a good Fire. area. I don't like crossing over yeah. the mountain. We got parking. It's next to a Seven Eleven. It's uh, it's looking like it's going to be a busy spot. So sick, dude. Congrats. Great. Still Congrats. I'm pumped. Can't well, wait. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. So Thank much. you. If you can just, just clap, clap that clap one out, out, just so we can have a back sync. That was fun. And that's it.